a Psycho Squad Gaming Club role-playing episode. This features mature adults using mature language. If that bothers you, stop listening now. Enjoy our game and remember, alter reality on a regular basis. Greetings gamers and happy Father's Day as it uh, turns out to be as well. This is Psycho Squad Gaming Club coming back to you. We're going to be playing some riffs today, but we're not going to be playing riffs burbs. We seem to be short our illustrious leader, Nick. So today we're going to be playing another version of riffs, and we're going to be playing in the phase world setting. So basically we're going to be playing riffs in space. One of my preferred space opera play. I like Star Wars, like Battle Lords and all that, but Rift's Phase World just kind of holds a special place in, in my heart. I like to play in Phase World. I think Palladium did a very good job with it. So that being said, we all have new characters. Three of us are using characters from a Phase World group that we used to play with years ago. We're bringing them back up from the grave, and then we have one more person who's bringing in a brand new character to to play with us today so we have a mix of second levels and first levels so nothing really big there just get through character introduction then my name is mr martin of course i am going to be playing today a freedom fighter anvil dwarf my occ is freedom fighter the rcc is anvil dwarf and his name is aldo he is a short squat dwarf, four foot tall, 310 pounds, orange eyes, bright red hair with, you know, just wild and bushy all over the place. He's got a very thick mustache and a beard, and his beard goes down past his waist. So he grew up in a manufacturing or an urban factory over in the United World of Warlocks, and then he decided to leave that area and he wanted to go out and be a mercenary so I he jumped in with some with some friends and now he's now he's an anvil dwarf mercenary uh, what else can I say about this poor guy oh I guess I'll go through his background roles so he had an early trauma event that caused a homicidal rage psychosis so he has a slight percentage chance to kind of lose it in combat father is a united world of warlocks magic marine specialist and he gave me his rail gun so that's some of my extra weapons and i was once caught in a ley line storm so anytime there's a ley line storm around i don't trust them they're evil we got to get rid of them that's it he's a big dwarf and super heavy armor got a force field decent skills and just a crap ton of weapons and a bad attitude. That's that's a fighter. That's him. Next, our second player is going to be Thomas. Thomas is going to be playing his character. So, Thomas, if you're ready to introduce your character, floor's all yours, sir. My character is a human space pirate. Her name is Miss Fortune. And uh, she is the pilot and owner of the ship in the group. And uh, and she is around five foot eleven. She's twenty six years old. She looks about nineteen. Uh, she has bright red hair with light curls, which her hair is uh, cybernetic. And she also has cybernetic uh, boobies and lips. So yeah, and. <laughs> She has a weakness for fashion. I don't know how that happened, but she grew up in the streets. What yeah, streets she, did you grow up in? Uh, probably Phase World. Actually, I, I was just questioning you because on your character sheet, you you grew up in uh, Scrapers. So. Oh, Scrapers. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had you had it down that you're from Scrapers. Oh yeah, there cool. it is. Never yep. mind. All right, yeah. So and then let's see, and then her preferred weapons are. Uh, a paired weapons, any 6SL Simline Magnum Revolvers. She uses them akimbo, one in each hand. So, yep. Yeah, she's pretty dang smart with an IQ of 26. So, all right, all good there. Yep. All right, excellent. Our next player is going. It's going to be our our infamous Catman. 
Monty's going to be playing his character. So, Monty, you want to tell us about your character, sir? The floor is all yours. The lady in question is named Charlene Pearson. She is a female wolf and freedom fighter that, courtesy of a, a little a little bit with her background, she wanted to eventually get strong enough, go away from home, and learn an adventuring life. This this rewarded her because one of the um, one of the um, trials that she was when she was on had signed on to a ship and was helping move general cargo from a you know rock asteroid and so forth. She found and assisted part of an archaeological dig in which they recovered and rewarded her with a very a strange a strange blade. It was an ancient melee weapon of unusual quality. She's not found anything like it. And while she's been offered money for it on occasion, she still keeps it out of just personal love. She enjoys high-tech technology. As being a woman in her race, she's big enough to handle most decent-sized weapons, being that she is she is well over 7 feet, 8 inches tall, weighs around 428, 26 pounds, charcoal hair with a long braid down past the back of the waist, and salt and pepper fur. The only thing she... Only thing she's not really falling out was that, unfortunately, because she got a little bit, she stayed out and had too much fun. She had a falling out with her father on certain things, and he's unfortunately on a government council. She had a she, she has a minor problem of well, Daddy has discovered that she talks too much and can talk in her sleep. You know she. It's kind of hard to keep a secret every once in a while, even though she knows she should. And that's gotten into trouble more than once. Excellent, sir. Is that all you got? You're, you're done there? Beyond yeah, that, basically, she has, has a number of skills that she's good at. She's, she's learned enough with heavy weapons and specialized weapons that she enjoys the personal touch of being the, a group sniper. That's actually earned her a, a small bit of recognition. And a lot of enemies don't like it when their heads start exploding. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So last, we're going to go to our uh, newest member, Brandon. Brandon made up a character just here recently, and I helped him out. So he's new getting into the whole the Rifts things. We're all really glad that he joined. Brandon, floor's all yours, sir. Tell us about your character y you made up. All right, so I'll be playing Esso Oki, a Draconid magic user. Um, she's got gray-green scales and wears robes. She's about 7 foot tall and 350 pounds and 480 years old because they live forever. Uh, she used to be part of a navigation business in, in, with her family, but due to a Kriegor invasion lost her husband, and her father's been captured, and trying to find revenge on all of that. Being a Draconid, she's got access to all the Leyline Walker abilities, while being tough as nails because of her race. That's all I got for that. Oh, good enough. So, to the whole group now, let me get this straight. My dwarf is the only male in this group today. Yeah. <laughs> Misfortune. Well, a problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. It's only one dwarf swinging dick in here. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, looking, I'm looking this way. That just means she's not the only female in the group now. So hopefully somebody else boobs a shot. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll make sure we'll shoot uh, Miss Fortune's cybernetic boobies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering if I was going to hear anything about that. Okay, this bit of information I'm going to give out is going to apply to everyone except Esso. Is it Esso? Is, am I saying it right? Or is it Eso? Either way works. Oh, okay, good. So I'll just say Eso then. So for Miss Fortune, Aldo, and Charlene, we were in a group previously. And <laughs> the, the last time, guys, that we sat down we played this group was may 8th of 2020 hopefully if, if you guys remember anything about that we were we had a couple other people there with us too and they're not able to to join us so i kind of splintered this group off 
So now we've got we got this group. The last time that we played, we were on a planet called the uh, Danar Combine, and we were hired as mercenaries along with this Cosmo Knight named Mo Car, who we kind of had our group had indentured servitude for, but they gave us money to to help out anyways. I mean, he is a he is a Cosmo Knight after after all. So we were in the middle of a large battle that last time that we played with the Splugorth forces, mostly the Katani. We were fighting Katani serpentine power armor with Katani soldiers and jump packs and stuff. And then they had an Insecticon Land Rover out there. And uh, they were blowing stuff up. And we were blowing stuff up right back. But what I'm going to do for to get this ball rolling for today is that we finished that combat. It's all It's all done. We get back, Mokar says that our servitude is is done, he's happy, he may call call on us on the future, but he says, that's it, you guys are, you guys are done. Let's see here, I will, I'm going to say that he's going to give each of us, and this will include Esso as well, he's going to give each of us 40,000 credits as payment uh, just for being a mercenary. So if everyone wants to add on their character sheet 30,000, you may do so. Bonte, I have control of your character, so I'll add it to your sheet for you. Since I know you're not available to to do it, oh, you're, join, you're joining on voice, but I got it. You pretty much it. Okay. No, it's not Thanks. a problem. I, I got it. I got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, 40K. I said I did say forty, didn't I? <laughs> I was about to ask. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Well, taxes. So. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's a um, Jewish Cosmo Knight, so he he gives you the credits, and he was all like, "Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to ask for twenty five percent of that, so ten grand is mine." You're like, "Wait, wait, wait, what? What, what the hell?" So <laughs> Hell, I play I play tabletop games to avoid taxes. What the hell? <laughs> that was our dwarf that was taking up the twenty, the, the um, ten, you know, X amount of percent. Like, what is that processing? You know, tax that kind of thing. You know, maybe. So they give us credits. So obviously, we're we're talking about what we're going to do. Uh, Mokar is is going to tell us what you guys should do is head back to center immediately. There's a, a big event that's happening with apparently the forge is uh, making an appearance as the rumors and it's going to be a spectacle to behold but there's also a lot of issues and security concerns and such about going about uh, uh, what's going on in in center at this time which center is the major planet metropolis hub of phase world kind of controlled by the prometheans somewhat but the consortium of civilized worlds is based out of there too a little bit just for just for background so we're told that we should go there urso you've been looking you heard the same thing you've been having these uh, dreams when you've been sitting around the ley lines just kind of hanging out, hugging them and stuff like that. And the communication across the ley lines is that something big is going to happen that everyone needs to get to center as fast as possible. So you find this group with a ship that is also heading back to center and we work out a, work out a deal that since we're going there anyways, you jump in with us. Good enough? Okay. Yeah. So so then you meet you meet everyone. You see the you see that we have a a ship. It belongs to Thomas's character, Miss Fortune. It's a runner ship, small spacecraft thing. It's called the Scarlet Icarus. There you go. It's it. So, all right, Set close to the center. Yeah, time to and and you are allowed to go back to center because we don't have Greg's character Fef. That's the whole reason oh, yeah. why we had yeah we had the leave center because his character got kicked off of center because he's a Promethean and his Promethean murdered people on center so the Promethean Council kicked him out. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah, so it gets to go back home. <laughs> Jump in the ship and take off back to center. During the during the trip, we'll say it, you know it's going to take at least oh I'll I'll say a day. I don't have a star map or anything, and we can either jump there or, or whatnot. Probably take a stargate. That will take just like just a little less than a less than a day. Your ship's not big enough that it has its own jump drive, so we'll have to take a uh, rifts gate. Is what we'll have to take, not a stargate, but a uh, a rifts gate. Yeah, you do have a counter gravity drive, but it would it still would take way too long to get there, even using your counter gravity drive, because you can only cover you know you can only cover five e- light years per hour, which is pretty damn fast when you think about it. But it's still the three galaxies is big, so rifts rift jumping it is. So mis- yeah, so misfortune, you're just listening to the chatter. Of everything that's going going on during the the downtime, and there seems to be a whole lot of freaking traffic going on all around center. Chatter ranges from people who want to see the the Great Forge. Uh, there are religious sects out that have made the pilgrimage to areas around center where they think that the forge is going to be making its reappearance. And I, you know, it's to people who know Phase World, the Forge is a driving force for, you know, a whole lot of characters and people and governments and, and all kinds of stuff. In fact, the Cosmo Knights are created directly from the energies of the Forge. So the Forge making a come back into this universe is is kind of a huge thing it's up to each individual character about how you feel about the whole forge and the hearsays that are involved with the forge i won't go into too much depth about about that if you for those of you who play phase world if you know about the hearsays then you can believe in them all you want to aldo is i'll just tell you guys aldo is not a religious zealot about the forge but he is a believer in the forge just to the point of that it is some sort of supernatural entity or deity or something that he can't explain but it definitely gets revered as like a god so him being from the united world of warlocks you know he's it's been kind of ingratiated in his head as a minor he is a minor runesmith because he is an anvil dwarf he dabbles in making rune weapons. He does. He is a believer of the forge, so he's kind of like, yeah, I, I, w- I wouldn't mind seeing if this whole forge thing happens. That's that's kind of cool. <laughs> Sounds like a great party. <laughs> so, Brandon, you have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> you're you're new a to bit. Phase World, so <laughs> <laughs> I was just adding the the background stuff to it. So, Thomas and and Monty, I don't know how much you guys. Monty, I know you know a lot about the whole Forge stuff, so what is, you know, what would Charlene think about all these rumors and everything? What what do you think her knowledge and beliefs are? Did someone hear him go away? I guess he must be getting a visit, so never mind. He's uh, typing. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, so he's got he's got someone visiting, so no problem. We'll get back to him, That that's cool. So, Thomas, do you know anything about the Forge hearsays and, and all that stuff? Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, my character is under the mindset that she don't care as long as they pay. <laughs> the Forge had better bring some money. That's all I give a shit about. <laughs> yep. All right. Good enough. As long as they stay out of her way. That's cool. Gotcha. Iso will we'll definitely get a chance to to talk and get to know the characters as, as best as as best as you can. You know, kind of stuff. So it's the dwarf Aldo. He keeps a 300 gallon steel tank filled with dwarven anvil beer, and it has a tap. So <laughs> he's if he's not working on something mechanical, well, even when he is, he's still drinking. He takes drinking as a as a sport. He's a dwarf after all. Supernatural physical endurance he's like yeah i'm here to drink so 
I'm just saying that because I know your you rolled that your character drink. So if you wanted to wanted to have some good beer, and it is good beer, but I mean it's good beer for dwarves. So <laughs> I don't know what a how high it is. We don't know in strength. Yeah, this is true. May not be straight spirit, but you know what? Lisa would probably enjoy it. Yeah, and it's, if your character likes beer, it's got to be. It is a decent quality uh, beer. By the way, the whole ship probably smells like cigarettes. Uh, it's okay. He's a smoker, anyways. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, Aldo has got uh, dwarven cigars. I have them. I actually have them right over here. I smoke really large cigars and pipes. So yeah, so three out of four of us all smoke. The, all right. the pipes are small, blunt instruments. Well, we call them a pipe. It's you know really a hollowed out you know uh, sledgehammer, but. Uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a small, blunt instrument. It's a pipe that long. It's only two and a half feet long. I, I don't think it counts as a pipe when it's the size of a didgeridoo. <laughs> Listen, he has a 25 supernatural strength. He can use a sledgehammer as a pipe if he wants to. So <laughs> That's why he'll sit He'll sit in the bar at a table with his food, got his drink, chugging on his pipe. Somebody tries to knock something over. Dunk! Get away. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Monty, you had stepped away, but I wanted—I was talking about the the forge hearsays, and I wanted to know what your character felt about the rumors of the forge making an appearance. I was talking about earlier. Hopefully, you heard. Yeah, I did hear. Basically, her thoughts would be general. That okay? So, there's you know thousands of rumors regarding what the forge is. It's an entity. It's a god. It's some kind of ancient super construction you know the, the list goes on and on but the whole bit about it's making an appearance is like okay sh- this is okay seers and signs and okay so we're just basically going to be have a visit from a cosmic deity of some kind and according to legend it births cosmo knights you know the guys that can t- that can take on starships <laughs> <laughs> This is, yeah. this is one of those, this should be an interesting event. You know, I, I mean, she's heard the legends, and even she's even heard rumors in, 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 in so, some, of, some of the long family stories from Uncle Dulap and so forth, that every once in a rare purple moon that a wolf and, a wolf and star marshal was chosen to become a, become a Cosmo Knight. And they're like, all right, this is an entire fleet of, oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's it's a fun dream. But even she has to wonder. It's like, what is this thing going to be? What's it going to look like? Do we answer it, sir? Is it going to be arrogant? You know, a, I mean, the, this thing, according to legend, can move planets out of the, like, get out of the solar system for a while. I'm coming through. Like, I don't see how people are going to dissuade it from stopping to come. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so good enough, good enough. So the the whole ship becomes a factory smokestack is is what it is, because three out of four of us smoke like crazy. Interesting. The 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 Wolfen's sense of smell is yeah. You have allergies there, Wolfen. Sorry. <laughs> There's a re- very good reason why she has environmental battle armor. She'll have a secondary <laughs> system to just wear around her face and shoulders to breathe clean air. She's got she's got a small case of nose filters too. There you go. It's like a personal problem to me. <laughs> pa pa pa. <laughs> oh, I walk around with a fish bubble on her head and had a pair of nose plugs connected to hoses. So Iso, I, I saw that you took uh, electrical engineer. I gave you a, a small a small kit and your equipment for for that. You'll catch on pretty quickly that Aldo is a is a dwarf who who knows how to work on stuff. Electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and spacecraft mechanics. He likes to work on work on stuff. And he's okay. an Yeah. And he's an armor. I don't have a rune I don't have a rune a magical rune anvil as of yet, so I can't make rune weapons at this time, but I have the knowledge to be able to do so. Your natural abilities will definitely pick up. I don't think anyone else has any magic stuff on them. Oh no, Charlene, Monty's character, has got a 
longsword that kind of looks the same make as yours. It's slightly enhanced and it looks like it was made by kobolds from a fantasy realm. You would pick that up immediately as part of your magic sight. That Interesting. Her, yeah, her sword lights up. Aldo, he has a lesser rune warhammer that glows brightly with magic, and then he has a greater rune battle axe that is like a 100 watt bulb in a small box to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're just all like, hey dude, you might turn in that thing down a little bit, but it it is a greater rune axe, so it's it's badass. <laughs> and and, and it, it shows up brightly on magic, so you, yeah. Yeah, you're just all like, wow, look at that damn thing. So, it's not uncommon for anvil dwarves to to have that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm just letting you know that these magic, because you're going to see them automatically. You, as soon as you walk in, you meet everyone, you just go ding, 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 ding. All right. No, no one else has any magical abilities, but some of these guys are carrying some pretty impressive magical shit. So, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And if I missed anything that you want to know off your abilities, just just let me know. I just know as a leyline walker, you get you can see magical emanations from stuff and and things like that naturally. So I was just giving you the information. As long as I don't see anything invisible, I should be okay. Nah, I don't think any of us have anything like that. So, so all right. After after a day or so, we <clears throat> in in rift travel, we're gonna pop out into a real space. Misfortune. As soon as you come out of the gate. It looks like a parking lot, uh, a galactic-sized parking lot. Freighters, destroyers, carriers, a couple of dreadnoughts from all sects, uh, as far as the Consortium of Civilized Worlds, some independent mercenary ships, some United World of Warlock ships, I believe, and there might be one or two Naruni type cruisers that are going to be there. There's not going to be anything from the Transgalactic Empire. That might be bad for them if they showed up. So, and nothing from the Blue Gorth at this time. No. So that's basically the sex of ships you're going to see. There's going to be the the lanes are just filled with ships, dude. It's it's impressive. You've never seen it this crowded around center before. Ah, well, let's play a festival in town. Uh, well, yeah, that festival is, hey, the forge is going to show up. <laughs> well, I don't know that. So. Yes, you do. We just talked about it. Oh, I was away for a bit. Oh, okay, I'm thanks. Okay, to eat. Oh, well, thanks. Right, so I've been told the forge is showing up. Okay, well... Well, that's the rumor. So you got money? <laughs> Who knows? It's called the Forge. It's got to be made of something precious, right? Something like that. I mean, precious metal comes from forges, right? Mm, there you go. You can't go wrong with that. Yep, yep. Sounds good. You can you can smell it from here, can't you? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what am I, a Jew? Come on. I can't smell stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how anyone can smell anything oh, other than tobacco products on this ship, but... Oh, wait. Never mind. Nick's character's in here. My bad. <laughs> oh, wrong Hit. game. Yeah, yeah. That, too. Haha. <laughs> Nick's not here, so we can make fun of his uh, blue space juice still. And on that note... <laughs> you... The smoke-filled helmet of, of multicolors. <laughs> Well, that's getting into another Nick character, but that's from Battle Lords, is Orion. So, anyways, <laughs> how could you not love the character? It's like, where's his face at? All I see is like a rainbow of oily colors in there. Oh, it's behind the rainbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the helmet that's filled with the rainbow-colored smoke. He's in there. Don't worry, he sees. So you will. So misfortune will will call in for for docking. They tell you to wait around for like an hour while they try and find a an area for you. Finally, they, they come back and say that uh, you're allowed to approach Center Spaceport Spire 8 
Docking Bay 341. Do not deviate from the programmed course we are uploading to you now. Roger, roger. Yeah, because if you do, you'll probably run into somebody. So, uh, is it a guy on the on the end of the line? Sure. Okay, okay. No, listen here. Right. She's gonna put on her sultry voice and everything. Okay. Mm. Actually, man, listen. I want a, a good view. You know, I can send you <laughs> some pics if you give me a, a good a, a docking bay with a good view. You know. Roll a percent. <laughs> <laughs> What, Charm and Press or something? Yes, sir. Roll a percent. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, 98? When you Do go I get into, arrested? When you go into your spiel about you'll take pics and you want to, you know, you, just that. About halfway through, the the comm goes dead. He hung up on you. Man. Tough <laughs> crowd. <laughs> well, got that roll out of the way. Okay. Just kind of look at the other two and, like, is he always like that? <laughs> what you mean, baby? Aldor's kind of kicked back in the past in the co-pilot's chair. He doesn't do anything, but he's just kicked back in the co-pilot chair, a big cigar, and he's just like, yeah, pretty much. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Uh, no, it always works. You must have actually hit a button. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you. that's it. <laughs> Finger quotes. <laughs> So you follow you follow the directions. Uh, you almost get ran over by a couple of freighters deviating from their courses a couple of times. You have to dodge out of the way. You know, give them the one finger salute. Uh, it's 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 like driving on a freeway at five o'clock in L.A. traffic. I mean, it is it it is that bad. There is just ships everywhere, and actually, you know, traffic is traffic is that bad. Everyone looking out of windows, everyone at some point is going to see different, oh, shall we say, different uh, beings that can survive the vacuum of space, that can, fl you know, fly themselves. They're going to be flying all over the place. So you will see what looks like probably Cosmo Knights, plural, flying around. At least six that you guys are going to be able to, to see. I know for the core group, the three of us, Seeing a Cosm Knight's no big deal. We just got done working for one. So it's up to you how you feel about that. Or if, if you know Cosmo Knights or have seen them before or anything. But Cosmo Knights are basically transformed creatures into, you know, living energy, paladin, godlike champions of justice in space. Bunch of goody two shoes, no go no doers. But they pay well. We just got paid by one, so... Yeah, they do, yeah, they do pay well. Okay. Monty, does that about sum it up correctly? And just a mild amount of personal arrogance, which is... Considering what they can do in battle, it's, it's, it's deserved. I, it's deserved. Yeah, yeah. Good ad. Good ad. And then it'll be, be like... She's seen one before, happy whenever they showed up. Kind of wish they showed up on her last encounter. Yeah, that would have been nice. Uh, Puff, cuff, Kriegor. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the Kriegor and Cosmo Knights are not the, you know, at the uh, handshaking phase of friendship right now. So, yeah. Since we're bringing up the case of Kriegors, I'm going to bring up another past group. I've got a very angry dinosaur that likes to bite the head off of Kriegor. Ah, uh, I miss that group too. Monty, you got a very good creature character in that group as well. What's the one with my blaze? Yeah, my... my my, per my personal star kitty that some really big, tall, nasty fellow has decided I need to add you to my personal pet menagerie. And not once but twice has tried this. Is that the one with Raditz, my blaze? Yes, you made a, you made a blaze for that group. It's a very powerful group, so yeah. Yeah. That's a nasty power group. I'd love, I, I need to, as far as Phase World goes, I'd, I'd really like to run that group again too. That was. I a, think that character's on hard copy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I'll look to see if I have a soft copy. I don't know if we ever did a soft copy for it. But. I think I did. Oh, okay. So, anyways, yeah, we've been playing riffs for quite a long time. For those listening, so <laughs> we have many groups. But anyways, this this group is a lot of fun. <clears throat> so that being said, about Blaze, you know, those are probably going to be. At least one or two blazes seen flying around too. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. 
Yeah, yeah, there'll easily be a couple of blazes. Um, they're not on the par of Cosmo Knights, but they're they're powerful supernatural energy creatures in their own right as well. So, but so everyone's going to see all all of this stuff. And center itself is lit up by an amazing amount of lights just from the sheer amount of ships that are around here. It looks brighter than it ever has for those of you who have left center, which is pretty much all of us. Some time ago, we left center. It wasn't quite lit up like it is now. The amount of activity has just caused it to just be, just be lit up like crazy. So we're going to be going to what is called the uh, Center Spaceport, which is located at the top of Center. It has tons of spires, which looks like a whole bunch of mountains. And they're just about as big as mountains. Each spire is as big as mountains. It's hard to get the scale of Center, but Center is is like Coruscant, if you want to equivalent with anything. It's a planet. It's, it's huge, a huge technological planet that was artificially created in space. So. <laughs> and it's ran pretty much solely by the Prometheans, eh, at, at least for the gate areas and the spaceports and stuff is controlled by... Prometheans. A lot of the other levels are controlled by powerful entities that that live there. You know, things like you know the the Splugorth, uh, alien intelligence. He actually has, I think he's like level two or level three that he owns himself is the Splugorth level. Uh, level two is uh, I can't remember what level two is. Level one is the Manners. That's where Thraxus and a whole bunch of other godlike beings. Are, are located so well we'll be docking in the center spaceport one of the smaller mountains we'll be going in through what looks like the equivalent of a uh, roll-up garage door has a force field on it you'll fly your ship into into the bay you're not getting a an extravagant bay it looks looks kind of beat up And the ship, like, just about fits inside of it. And then it, it, you know, you dock. It locks you. It locks you down. Uh, force fields go on. The main doors behind us close. And you get the signal of you are now docked. You are now locked down. A representative will be with you shortly as soon as we have personnel that can make it to you please do not try and leave the dock until your representative gets to you we will be I'm to leave that dock we're we will be with you just as soon as we can okay and that's it so the dock is is lit it's got storage crates all around it on the on three walls there's uh, several exit doors randomly put around uh, we'll say three uh, four exit doors four of them are labeled you know not an exit employee only one of them is like storage the other one is like an emergency exit the other one is like employees only kind of stuff the main door that you're used to has uh it, it's it's locked it's a heavy pressurized door there is an active force field on it that is active and the keypad on there says, has on it locked, not cleared, which me, which you misfortune, you're, you know, you're like, well, crap, because they have their force fields up, you're not going to be able to force it open and get and sneak past it. So you're you're kind of stuck, really. Uh, I gotta decide whether or not I'm gonna put on the NEBA 50 armor. Which is no, I don't think I want to put on that one. That's a that's some big armor. You know? Well, center doesn't really care. They do have some weapon restrictions in the in the core area of of center. The manners uh, doesn't like people unless you're part of security force. 
they're not, they're not too big into people running around armed and, and everything. Yeah, the, the, the manners. Level two is Gateland. Gateland is very much controlled. They, they don't want people wear, uh, having guns and stuff like that. You, everyone gets controlled by force fields and everything from from the Prometheans. So Gateland, pretty locked up. Yeah. Level three, the Splugorth Trading Post. The Splugorths don't give a flying shit what you carry into their their sector. Because to them, better. yeah, to them, it's all sellable. So <laughs> everything has a price. Everybody yeah. has a price. I'm not kidding you. So <laughs> that's, the splu- need, that's the Splugorth for you. What we need is a slave that can keep in my room and uh you know whoa whoa whoa, uh, you, know, whoa. you know what i'm talking about you know i'm looking at your alignment to unprincipled hey hey, <laughs> hey hey it always turns into something oh anyway no she she just horny okay there's two of you that are unprincipled and you're one of them okay so when you talk to, start talking slaves monty your character's unprincipled by the way and we're having talks about Hiring slaves now. No, 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 no not hiring. Buying. buying. I'm, just that, I'm just kidding. It's worse. Uh, what? What's a? What's an N forty heavy? Oh, never mind. That's a force field. Yeah, the N forty heavy force field. That's that's the heavy force field. Remember, we spent a I'm lot not... of money to buy all those things. Yeah. 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 Considering uh, hiring slaves, sure. <laughs> Listen, I got a lot of money, and she wants to spend it, okay? Or some of it, at least. You ain't got that much money just yet. I I got a lot of money. Now, I will tell you, you talk about slaves, and Aldo just goes, eh, eh, whatever. Yeah, see? Hey, I can play it because my uh, Aldo's alignment is anarchist, so he don't give a flying turd. Well, Here's the question now. Hold on, guys. Okay, hold on, hold on. Before you go any farther, Esso... Has not picked an alignment. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I for, the the riff system for alignments is not what I'm used to, so I don't know what the, all the titles are and what they all stand for. Uh, you better well, not too scrupulous. Let me tell you. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, let, let's uh. Let, let's take it. Let's oh, let's take swear. a time out for a no. second. Let's let's He's go not. to alignments over here. <laughs> oh, no. I know which one I want to talk them into. <laughs> Come no, on, Monty. Please, not scrupulous. Come on, Mont. No, it's no. I got one even worse. Let's go principled. Oh, please, no. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll ruin everything where, where, where can I find like the different alignments? Page two nine two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Two eight nine. Two eighty nine. Of the ultimate edition. Yes, of the ultimate edition. Page two eighty nine. Yeah, step six, picking an alignment. So the next page has got alignment. Rifts does not believe in neutral alignments. Either you are good, evil, or you are selfish. Good alignments are principled, which is basically your paladin, lawful good. You have scrupulous, which is kind of like chaotic good. Then you have selfish alignments, which is unprincipled, which is kind of in between chaotic neutral and chaotic good kind of stuff. You have Anarchist, which is just completely selfish. I don't give a shit. Then you get into the evil alignments, which is Aberrant, which is very much lawful evil. And then you have Miscreant, which is like neutral evil. And then you have Diabolic, which is chaotic evil. I don't, I don't want a slave for an evil purpose. I want it for a selfish per. A purpose because she needs something to bone every night. Get that well, the problem with the unprincipled is that they have a high regard for life and freedom. So it, it's kind of hard to say that you, it's kind of hard for you to say that you're going to have a slave okay. Okay, and be fine. unprincipled. Okay, fine, 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 fine. We'll, we'll, oh, we uh, go with unprincipled and, you know, glare menacingly at the mention of what the hey. fuck are you doing? She's like, I'm joking, okay? <laughs> Go to a bar and pick up a cheap man. <laughs> no, that won't be cheap. 
Look at me. No, she said, no, 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 no. She said cheap man, not you. <laughs> you will be able to pick up a cheap man. I'm sure that won't be an issue for any of you guys. Hell, even Aldo, if he was that way, could probably pick up a cheap man. <laughs> hey, hey. I don't go that way. <laughs> hey, yeah, you better not. I'm right here, baby. <laughs> go ahead. That's a cigar I could smoke. Bring them boobies over here. <laughs> Motorboat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, SO's gonna just take a swig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not dealing with you right now. I don't. I know I have a a, you know set, a light light combat armor on me. Once you go dwarf, to... okay. you keep on coming back. We got the biggest rune hammers. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, I, have a, I need be a 30 light combat armor, too. Yeah, I'm just going to look down and go, like, a little short for my taste. <laughs> Elevator shoes or a step stool. Hey, if you want to slow dance, this dwarf's in there, man. I'm at the perfect height. <laughs> <laughs> He's four feet. <laughs> and we got, what, a seven foot character and an almost eight foot character? <laughs> Again? Good guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, wolfins are wolfins are tall. Draconids oh, are tall. So why well, we always gotta have a furry in the group? <laughs> Very not. Uh, if you go to Blaine's though, uh, Keith talked me into the draconid. <laughs> I didn't talk you into it. You were just we were at work and you were all like, "I want to play something magical." Oh, I was all like, "Dude, wait. Oh, wait, draconid mag user for wolfin." Yes. Oh, just okay, now figuring right. that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I shouldn't even be surprised to be honest. Big furry boobies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next to big human alternate altered boobies. Next yeah, to yeah. big lizard boobies. Yeah, we're the to big dwarf boobies. I no. Hello. No, where no, where no, those come no, from? Son of man a bitch. Boob. <laughs> I don't have moobs. I have a good strength and an awesome PE. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. So anyway. Yeah. Are you guys done talking right. about your damn boobs? Are we yeah. done? <laughs> yeah. So we, we can continue. And I'm done talking about the slaves, okay? There's more jokes I could have made, but we shouldn't go there. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This coming from yet another furry. Wonderful. Alright. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> Alright, where were we? Oh yeah, we were we're rolling uh, initiative to start the furry orgy. No, what? No. <laughs> no. Monty rolled a natural 20, I'm sure. So <laughs> he wins. Bonus plus two. <laughs> he gets a 22, natural 20. Ta-da! Me first. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do with you guys, man? You guys are, you guys are a bad influence. That's the initiator. <laughs> <laughs> Who would that be? What are you talking about? I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, in short, we can walk around the ship. And there is... Whoa, where's all that background noise coming from? That's Brandon. Oh, Brandon, you got a fan blowing right on your microphone. All right, it's gone. Thank you, sir. That was, that was ear testing right there, dude. <laughs> I don't know why my noise suppression wasn't working, but okay. Yeah, yeah no, it was it was overloading, man. I was just all like, whoa, <laughs> for a second there. It went away. No, that was, that noise was suppression, cool. I turned the fan off. But, yeah, no, noise suppression decided it didn't want to work then. <laughs> it's cool. It's it's fixed now. So, basically, we, we can just hang out here, and we just got to wait for someone to show up. Cool, you know, kind of a cool, cool story bro kind of kind of thing. If there's anything that anyone wants to particularly do in here, it's up to you, but we're, we're kind of locked in here. So, I'll tell you, Aldo will just hang out on the hang out on the ship. He's going to be set up in his heavy combat armor. I've got my heavy force field uh, on me, but I don't have it active. He's got guns and weapons all over the place on the ship, so he's just kind of hanging out, waiting for these people to to show up, that's him. 
He's like, well, we're at center. I'm going to wear my big heavy armor just because that's what I do. Aldo will will say, if, if we got nothing that is going on, uh, me and my credits are going to level three to the Splugorthian trading post. And I'm going to go buy me some shit that wrecks lives. So <laughs> I think I could get behind that. He was serious rock guy. Yeah, yeah, he'll he'll look over at uh, Charlene. He'll be he'll be like, "Hey, it's gonna be like the only place you're gonna be able to buy rounds for that fancy plasma sniper rifle of yours." So come on, furry ass, let's go. Well, I gotta do that. We'll make plans for that definitely. <clears throat> and I know a couple of places that serve some awesome drinks. So you're gonna make a few and start downloading downloading paperwork and getting it printed up regarding okay, where to go here, there. Uh, okay, there's the Rooney Center. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you have you have computer operation. No need to roll it. When you access the computer uh, system, I don't see that you have a personal computer of your own. So I'm just going to assume you're using like the ship or something to get contact. We don't have equipment. God damn it! It's annoying. You're a single personal ship computer. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be empty. Right. No. 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 Listen, if we need something, if y'all need equipment, just tell me, and I can, and I can order them. Well, okay. that's where we're trying to... We're, we're waiting okay. for the inspector to show well, up. You better hurry up. Well, you know, they're kind of busy, so... But, so, Charlene, when you go access the computer, the connection to the network is equal to using a modem... At ninety six hundred baud, you're lucky if you can get okay. Either it's really slow, yes, and noisy, or something is wrong. It is slow. It is being overloaded, and in fact, you will get a message that will say state that the system is seeing higher than normal activity. Please be patient. We are working on it now, and after about twenty minutes, you'll be able to basically download the little icon that says log in here <laughs> and then when you finally get to press that button then it turns into a little triangle that does like the windows wait for it kind of thing and it just sits there she points this out to other people you know like you know, just so you know maybe some delays <laughs> guys and guys and girls just to voice it just waiting on the inspector to get here so I can try to get back to my house. See the fa- see what's left of my family. Oh, cool. So you you, you wrote your backstory as a you're actually from center? That's yes. cool. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Probably one of the it's gonna have to be one of the even if it's a business, it's gonna have to be probably one of the lower levels. We can we can go through exactly the level that you're from later on. Your your family's not so rich that you're gonna be like up there, I would say your family is going to be level four, section D, residential district. If you want to take notes on that, you know what? That's kind of run down. You're, you're, you know what? Let me change that. Section, section H. It's working middle class. The section D is predominantly run down. It doesn't sound like your family is that way. It sounds like they were, they're not well to do, but they were at least like the equivalent of middle class. Is that right? Yeah. Or or are they like ult- I didn't see anything that you said that made them like ultra rich that would put them above level five. You have no, to th- run. They're just they're just decently off in middle class. Okay, level four and up, you got to be stupid rich to to stay on. Level three, you have to be a splugorth basically. You know, you you don't live in in splugorth uh, unless you are splugorth. And there is a there's a great pyramid in level three that belongs to the Splugorth because oh what's his name? Crinolith? Krin- Something like that. There's there's a Splugorth alien intelligence that lives in the Great Pyramid in section three. And he's the guy who controls all of the Splugorth stuff that happens in center. He's the man. <laughs> Pretty much. Right, Monty? Okay. He is definitely in charge, beyond doubt. Clincrenith. Yeah, his name is Lord Clincrenith. Oh, he actually has a separate residence away from the Great Pyramid. Never mind. But he spends a lot of his time 
in the Grand Pyramid, and he has his own phase, his own phase teleporter gate control there too. But I have no problem with your with your family saying that they are on uh, level four. That's the merchant zone, and the area that they will that they will be from is is going to the H that I that I told you about. That's like the the business type stuff. Everything above that is owned by all the sectors above you are owned by like the Warlock Market, Bushido Industries, the Naruni's Entertainment District is is over there. Business District for the Naruni is is on this level. Robot Combat Arena is on this is on this level. That's owned by Naruni. The Free Trade Zone is owned by the Naruni. They own everything pretty much in level 4. It's kind of kind of stupid, but the the Naruni have a big big hold on level 4. But uh, okay. and then, and re- remember, it sounds like there's a whole lot to these levels, but these levels are the surface equivalent of like half a half a planet if you laid out flat. The center is effing huge. But yeah, and if anyone tries to use a communicator, you come up with a busy signal. That that says that uh, all lines are currently busy at this time, blah blah blah. So we're all just we're all just sit we're all just sitting there and you know just waiting. So Charlene's using the computer. So you take it you're just helping out and just doing other stuff around the ship. Yeah, sound right. Mostly mostly just waiting for them to say okay, you can get out of here. Okay. Misfortune. I already know what what you are doing. Aldo, I know what he's doing. So, actually, uh, Aldo will no, 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 he's not going to move. He's he's enjoying himself. I was going to go look at some stuff on the outside of the ship, but he's like, nah. We'll hire a we'll hire a team to do that. And I'm not the guy who goes out and go works on the ship, unless she asks me to. So, after easily another hour or so of just not being able to. To do anything, the communication lines are, are all are all jammed up. Uh, Monty, the little swirling triangle for access, hasn't stopped. In fact, it kind of resets itself, you know, a couple of times as it's all like, you know, trying to search for being able to gain access to something. The whole place is going to shake, and all the lights are going to go out, and the emergency lights are going to kick in. The communications dozing off, dozing off, and then you get thrown thrown onto the floor. Right. The communications just goes dead. It's just static air, and Monty, the computer that you're linking up with, just goes offline. No messages. No nothing. It just goes. Nope. There is nothing to connect to. The fact that this is preceded by a violent shake, and things got thrown around, including bodies. This is okay. Emergency lights. Let's get our gear on if we don't have it on. Well, the lights ship it, the ship itself has its own normal lighting. Nothing's wrong with it. It was the bay that went into emergency lighting. That you know, you, you felt it, you felt the the shake all all around you guys. Real quick, let me switch over to SO because that character is the only one that's that's got this stuff. SO. You are aware, since you got here and you know Center, you're, you're already aware of the multitudes of ley lines in space that converge at nexus points on Center. Center is strategically placed to where they control nexuses within Center. Okay? Do you understand that much? Yes. Okay. So you're, you're, not, su- you're not surprised by that. So your sense ley line, it's it's obviously it's on in the background. You're just all like, ah, all right, I feel the energy from the ley lines. They're close, you know, feels all right. Do sense uh, the different nexuses. There there are many nexuses. Every once in a while, you will feel your sense rifts go off. You'll feel the you'll feel the energies of a of a rift opening. That's common in center because a lot of people use rifts as as gateways for travel and to go to other worlds and stuff. And the Prometheans control that uh, with the utmost scrutiny. So to to you, it's it's no big. It's not a big deal. You're used to those 
those feelings. Uh, does that make mm-hmm. sense? Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, the you block out the noise of, well, you're not close enough for ley line transmissions and stuff. You're not on a ley line right now. You don't get on a ley line until you get to one of the higher levels or even to one of the lower levels where you can actually uh, soak in a, a ley line. The spaceport that you guys are on, center spaceport, does not have any ley lines that intersect nearby in any of the levels of of like the mountainous tops and everything that was done on purpose if anything they're they're miles away you are going to feel an incredible magical surge where every ley line lights up like crazy easily five anywhere from five to ten times the amount of energy that they can normally hold, which is vast, but you can feel that they all just go on overdrive at once. You feel massive rifts suddenly opening within your area of influence. They hurt. You have the equivalent of like a magical headache, a migraine. Oh boy, you'll probably end up like staggering a bit, you know, rubbing right. yourself up against the, the side of the ship. Like, what the hell? Right. And then your sense magic in use. I know it's a, only 100 feet per level, but it is, you know, this is just so disgustingly raw and nasty that you your senses can't help but to, to pick up that there is a overwhelming supernatural diabolical evil that has issued forth from active rifts not good not good not good not right. good I, yeah so I just kind of run into the ship and just go everyone up now <laughs> All those, all those just sitting sitting there just about to go to sleep when the big boom happens and he's just kind of looking up like, huh? And then you come in and go, we need to get out or, you know, what did you say again? I'm sorry. Everyone up now. Shit just got real. <laughs> wait. And he's like, wait, what? Really? What kind of shit? What? Huh? <laughs> Little more info. Magic. You need to hit it. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Simple words. Right. So roll me your lore magic, please. Every time I grab the dice, I lose what one of my D10s. There it is. All right. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> That's an 86. Okay, so there's a high amount. The, the energy, you can't quite pinpoint the type of energy. You just know it doesn't feel right as far as alignment-wise goes. Don't know if you have anything that you, you can tell alignment, but... The energies that's that's that you're sensing is just nasty, evil, dark, nasty energy. Uh, <laughs> I said nasty a lot because it's gross. You're just like that, 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 that. I just took a bite out of a turd sandwich of energy. You're like, Ugh, nah, blah. All time with a migraine. Fun. Right. This is uncool. So, at this point, what I would like from everyone is initiative. Let's get into it. Aldo. Aldo has a whopping plus one initiative. Oh, that's that's fantastic. He's going to get a 12. Okay. okay. I know before I uh, increase my speed... I had an initiative plus one. Did changing the speed change that initiative? Oh, let's see. Uh, you're right. It might have. That is a 30. Yes, that turns into a plus four initiative. Thank you. Yeah. So you have a total of a plus four. There was nothing else that added to it. Shit, nine. <laughs> okay. That's for SO's got a nine. Excellent. Thomas? Uh, 13. 13. And who wants to roll for Monty's character? If you could, please, Brandon. I got a plus three. A plus three on the dice? Uh, 21. Sweet. That sounds like what Monty... Monty usually rolls pretty good for initiative, so yeah. He, <laughs> it's, nice. It's all the stuff that comes later. 
Well, I wasn't going to use the D20 that just kind of said fuck you to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, moving on here for initiative. All right. So, at the top of here for initiative... Hasn't happened yet. So, Charlene, you are up first... You don't have really any enemies that you see. You're on the ship, but I just need to... We just got to burn attacks, unfortunately, to to do movement and figure out what's going on and, and all that so, and what you're doing. So what? it's your turn. What would you What would you react with? And initially, after the shake, and she got knocked to the floor, you know, I'm sure we saw th- th- through parts of the ship the lights flicker in the bay. Her first bit was get up, get all her gear on, and grab everything she had, and pretty much prep for a fight. That, that was her basic thought. When it comes around, she's figuring, okay, move around the ship, check near any viewports, and we see anything odd out there? No, you're, you're not going to see anything odd uh, as of yet or anything. I mean, if you're just looking at viewports. So when you say you're you're grabbing everything, obviously you were everyone was already in their their armor and stuff. So are you grabbing all of your guns? The oh yeah, she's not leaving anything behind. But this is this has got. To, and when our little dragoness came out saying that she felt she could taste evil in the air, that can, that kind of set her the fur on the back of her neck hiking up. It's like all right. Okay, what, stay on. what weapon will you have in hand right now? Her, fa- her favorite sniper rifle. Okay. The NE75. Ah, the NE75H shoulder cannon. It's a, the, the Naruni plasma cartridge sniper rifle. Yeah, that, that thing's badass. So, cool. Not a, so, yeah, you're looking at stuff. You're just not seeing anything. You, there's equipment that, that shakes. You can feel active tremors going off. Right now, you're just you can just feel it all all happen. Uh, next, we'll go over to Misfortune. Thomas, you're up. Uh, just kind of just I mean, uh, let's see. Oh, what's what's Brandon's character's name? S O. I mean E S O. I mean S O. I seem pretty dang worried, and uh, even though she doesn't really trust magic that much, uh, you know. She she be like, oh okay everyone else is grabbing weapons but on armor well I guess I'll do the same uh, she's gonna put on the uh, NEBA thirty light combat armor mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, get her revolvers out and sit in the cockpit look out okay well the cockpit is gonna be facing the wall that you know where the the main doors are and everything. So, you don't have a perception bonus. So, let's just have you roll a perception check, just a d20. The higher, the better. A three. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you're about as perceptive enough to, to be like, hey, my ship hasn't lost power. That's cool. You need to get the windshield cleaned. Did anyone get uh, windshield wiper cleaner? <laughs> so, yeah, you flubbed that roll something terrible. I can't give you any information on that one. Uh, Aldo is god i got way too many weapons i can't carry everything like the cat can <laughs> he will grab he'll look at so and he's just all like is this evil like outside do we need the when you say get out of here do you mean the is the ship gonna be blown up or or i mean it, <laughs> what's going on <laughs> damn well, that's a good way to phrase this yeah well i mean you were the one who, who said we need to get out of here and he's all like I mean, so he's he's just like I just out. said everyone up. I said everyone get up. Oh, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, it's like something's not right. I don't know what the hell is going on, but it does not feel good. Yeah. Well, he has. I mean, he has an IQ of fourteen, but he's he's kind of doesn't have a whole lot of whole lot of common sense. He's got single numbers for ME and MA, so he's <laughs> he's he's just kind of like I'm gonna go outside and go hit something, but I don't know what. I don't see anything around here. However, I feel shit's going down. <laughs> don't know right, where. Well, if I'm gonna, sh- and, and if we can't leave, then that means so he'll he'll go out the thing, go down the the ramp to go look outside. He's gonna grab his greatest rune battle axe, throw it on his back. He'll grab his favorite weapon system, which is the ME one hundred and one Popper multi missile rifle. 
It has a snipering laser and a plasma cartridge rifle in there, and it also has a um, mini missile launcher on it. So it's a behemoth of a weapon system. It's like three different weapon systems in one rifle. It's it's just ridiculously ugly. He's got two plasma cartridge pistols. He keeps those on for as backup. I think that's all he's going to run out with just to make sure he has everything. Because he also has a bunch of... Do I have any grenades? God, I didn't even write down if he bought grenades. What kind of equipment list is this that I don't have hand-thrown grenades? Mother... Ugh. Dang it. Need grenades. All right. Fine. So he's going to run off the ship just at the gangplank and just be like, all right, if anyone steps out, gets out of line, I'm going to I'm gonna go after it. And he's also going to go ahead and turn his heavy force field on just because. Since he's out there and he's drawing aggro, he's just like, boom, turns on the force field. So you are last. Okay. Um, no, she's going to have her right, her, uh, her any 10 plasma cartridge rifle on her back, her HI-10 heavy laser pistol on her hip, and her long sword in her hand. Okay. Um, kind of like right behind, uh, right behind, on just ready for shit to show up, because like, she doesn't trust anything. Okay, would you, I, I would assume that you would probably want, I mean, would you prep and prepare and, and cast of uh, Armor of Ithan? You're playing a mage, after all, so, I mean... Yeah, I'm just trying to find the duration of it. I was... You're not so close to a ley line that you're going to get the double effects and, and everything, so... Oh, actually, you are well within two miles. Uh, are you within two miles of a ley line? You're not within a mile of a nexus, and you're not on a ley line. I will say that you're within two miles of a ley line. It's, it's below you, but you can feel it. Which means, yeah. you, which means that you will increase the duration of your spell by 50%. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll activate it. I'm just trying to find the duration of it. Okay. Yeah, just Book of Magic level 1, right? Yeah, the organization well, here is a little it, bit weird. Oh, no, it's not a level 1. It's actually a level 3 spell. Uh, invocation. One minute per level of the spellcaster. Okay, minute and a half then. Well, cool. Yeah, per level. But, uh, yeah, your first level, so... 10 points is 10 points. Plus, it takes half damage from magic, fire, magic, lightning, and cold. It's usually the, the go-to thing for magic users to, to put that up. I don't remember how Ricochet Strike works. I would have to look that up. I think that's when you get shot at, you can cast it as a dodge action, I think, to fire a, uh, you know, Ricochet a shot that's been fired at you to spack to someone else. I think is how it works. I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to look it up. I know it's. I know that one's different. So must be a physical weapon for ricochet strike. Oh, spells, spells, spells. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you'll get a bunch more as, as you role play and go up in levels and stuff. So there's a whole level in area where well, there's a whole area on level four and center that's devoted to all the schools of magic including necromancy. So you can learn a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, they're, they're all over the place. You just got to have the credits and someone who's willing to teach you. That's the thing. Cool deal. So if that's done, at the end of this, then the door that is the common door that's in, in the front part of the ship, it's probably a good 80 feet or so, we'll, we'll say, from the front of the front of the ship it yeah it, it's it's going to open up by itself and through it comes through creatures it's going to be many of them that oh wow so th they'll have like a eight to ten foot wingspan they kind of look like bats but they're horribly grotesque in, in nature, and they don't look anything like a bat except for the fact that they have bat wings and claws and a massive head filled with teeth and all kinds of crap. They, they're about six feet tall and about three feet wide. So they're, they look pretty big, and there's dozens of them easily that as soon as the door opens up, they just come flying in, just 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 flapping around very fast, 
pouring through that door and a bunch of them just start flying all over the place they they screech and make all these nasty noises guttural type noises and 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 screeching and stuff and you guys can hear a bunch of them kind of land on the ship and there's like scraping and tearing sounds and and stuff like that that happens at at that time so then we will go after they're done we will go to charlene you are next and this is where we're actually going to start tracking attacks because now they'll they'll be pretty much combat so the actions before did not spend any attacks we were we were just going in initiative order but now we're going to keep track of of attacks so charlene you are up all right the minute the doors open these nasty starts coming through it's like Start making heads explode. Okay, let me see. You do not have any lores, so you have no idea what the hell these things are. You're just like, ugh. Hell, they're ugly. They've got teeth, and they like look like they want to chew on things. I am not on the menu. Right. So you're gonna move over to the ramp where you can get out. Basically, get outside the, the yep, ship. Get outside, basically, as a. As I move out, trip my force field and start sighting up some, something's head. There you go. Get the force field up. That's that's a good call. So, all right. If you want to shoot one, you, you definitely can. Oops. Yeah. Where am I? C1, fire. Yeah, I'm trying to get... I need to bring up the ranged combat stuff because you... All right, so if you want to use the sniper ability on your rifle, that you have to make an aim shot and that takes two attacks if you want to just shoot at them normally with a single shot then it would be your plus one to hit and that would that's all you would get you would not get the the sniper or anything you're just aiming you're just shooting off the hip kind of thing so yeah, it, it doesn't really matter now i also just noticed that because of her training with weapons she had a plus two bonus with ranged weapons <laughs> Like, doesn't matter now, but still. Shoot one. Oh, yeah, you're plus two. In- All right, let me... Yeah, you're right. You have plus two initiative with ranged weapons. So let me let me increase your initiative by two, and it will kick in after this, okay? Thank you for that. Sorry about that. Does Aldo have that? That's from ranged abilities. Nope, he does not. He's not high enough level to, to get that just yet. Just you. So you want to take a normal shot, Adam? Yep. Okay, so your total is going to be a plus one. There is going to be a penalty for them moving because they are flying and flying fast. It does add to the, the the natural AR that have to use to hit for them, which is... I, I think it, with, the, when the door opens, they start coming through in such a mass and so fast, it's called start nailing them as quickly as possible and thin the numbers. So I need just someone please to toss a d20 and... and Let's see how well I do. Yeah. Well, call someone out. It's a D20 plus one. Do it, please, Brandon. 16 plus one. So the total is 17? Yes. Or, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just, if you could, please just give me the total with the bonuses. So a 17 will definitely center punch one of these things as it's flying through the door. I take it you're not, you had said that you were shooting at while they're flying through the door. Your chances to hit are probably a little bit greater. So, the damage will be 2d4 times 10 plus 20. Who do you want to roll that damage for you? Uh, please go ahead, Brandon. 2d4 times 10 plus 20? Yes, 2d4 times 10 plus 20. It's a big, nasty rifle. 70. Shoo! That's some damage. So, your shot is going to hit one of these things, and you are pleasantly surprised when the plasma cartridge round hits it, and it explodes explodes in a little ball of fire and goopy bits go all over the place. It grins and wagged its head of like, oh, fish in a barrel. <laughs> that looked fun. Okay, so then uh, Thomas Miss Fortune is going to be up next. Okay, well, she's going to protect her ship, so she's going to get up, uh, put out her force field, and go out there and shoot at something. Okay. Are you going out the main doors like everyone else on the bottom ramp, or are you doing something different? Oh, okay. So, yeah, so you go out there, and you see these things flying around, and you're just all like, whoa. Um, 
I don't see any lore skills on your character either, so no, you have no not. idea what the hell these things are. You're just no. like, eh, those look nasty. And, uh, how do I do this? Oh, uh, because you have the skill paired weapons pistol, you don't get the penalty for firing two weapons at the same time, so it becomes normal for you. So it becomes a plus one to strike, and... You roll, so you're basically doing a single shot, and you're rolling for each one. So you're going to roll two 20s and add one to each one. But I take it you're shooting at the same target, right? Yes. Okay. Now, they do have a thing on there where it gives a plus one to strike on an aimed shot, but an aimed shot takes two attacks. Uh, I'm looking up the uh, specifics on my... Well, they'll be within range of your, well, I, I know, of your pistols. Maybe not within. Yeah, they'll be with, well within range of your pistols. They have a 500 foot range, so a shot from each. Oh, here's the left arm. Uh, that'd be a total of 16. And the other one, uh, that'd be a total of a two. So I roll in that one. Uh oh, that's a percentage roll, please. As you roll a critical failure for ranged weapons, roll me a percent, please. Ah, uh, nine. Okay, they kind of look like revolver-type weapons, so when the hammer falls on the plasma cartridge, it doesn't go off. You just hit a dud. Oh, thank God. <laughs> but your other one... Yeah, your other one went off, and you actually rolled well enough to be able to hit it, so you may roll damage. Uh, 1d4 times 10. Yes, sir. Uh, 20. Okay, you tag one, and it uh, it burns away a good portion of its body. It spins around and screeches and kind of and flaps around, but it's missing a leg, a, a leg talon kind of thing. But it is still active. You didn't blow it up, but you did a lot of damage to it. Okay, right. seems good. Excellent. Now, oops, sorry guys, hold on. Oh, you know what? What, what would help? I have. Let me get. I need to get a source book out. I'm sorry. Hold on, guys. Wow, what book is that? It's 10. I just uploaded a an image into the general chat on Discord for anyone who can look. Those are that's what's flying around. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, lovely. I didn't know if you were going to be able to see it, uh, Monty, so I'm glad you were able to. So, okay. And then running through the door is going to be some of those. Oh, and, oh, look, it's something you can step on. Yeah, they're they're only like three foot tall. Okay, they're 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 little guys, just just little guys. There will be uh, two of them that uh, seem to come through the door. They're also flying, and they're just kind of like looking around and going like, bah! you know, kind of stuff. And they're trailing fire from like their mouths. It looks like the that they have like this heat wave effect and, and fire that is active in their mouths as they're as they're flying around looking for targets right now she yells at the dwarf do you know how to play golf yeah <laughs> hell yeah there's two of those that are flying around setting up my track sorry guys give me a second i wasn't quite ready for for that one right there all right so those two things come walking in that will be their action Aldo is up next. And it's kind of funny that you just, you just said, "Do you know how to play golf?" And he's just all like, "Yeah, all right." What does he have? He has Lore Galactic and Alien, which doesn't cover these guys. He has no idea what the hell these things are. Things that need to die. <laughs> yeah, he's just all like, "Uh, okay." I've I've never I've never seen an alien like these things before. <laughs> but what he's going to do is take a standard action and he's going to do a three round burst out of the barrel for the medium plasma cartridge rifle. So it it shoots three shots in in rapid succession. Shots use three. That halves his to hit, and you round down, so he's a straight, he only has a plus one, so that puts him at a straight up. 
to shoot at, and he's going to shoot at one of the bigger creatures that just uh, came flying around. He's just all like, hey, beautiful, say hi. And he'll get a 19 on the die. Sweet. So he's gonna see. He's gonna send three rounds into it, and it, and it gets tagged by all three. They they do not try and dodge. They're at a very close range, and they generally don't care about dodging these creatures. So he does one d six times ten. I believe is the damage for a three round burst. Yes, one d six times ten. And he's going to just pepper this thing for 50 points of damage. Woo! Wow. Pow, 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 pow. I did not get the MDC of these things. My bad. Oh, stop minimizing. What is the MDC of these guys? Okay, so he's going to take the 50 points of damage. He's going to get pock marks of plasma that explode on his body. And he's going to stand there and tank it. He does not look like he suffered any super adverse effects or anything like that. He's, he's He took it like a champ. He's just like, <coughs> oh, oh, yeah? So well, he's got some burn marks on his body like he took some damage, but it was not crippling damage. Does that make sense to everyone? Resilient. Yes. He took some damage, but we'll call that ugly dude number one on the initiative track here. Until someone can identify what all these things are. So far, no one's got the skills. At least not anyone who has been able to go yet. <laughs> right, Iso? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm not touching that D20 again. <laughs> oh no, it'll be a percentage. It's going to be a skill check for you. Oh yeah, I'm sure you have demon and monster lore. None of oh, us, none of us drag ass gun toting maniacs have demon and monster lore. So, yeah, it's like oh crap. So we have no idea what we're fighting. We just know that our guns affect it. That's good enough, right, Monty? Shoot, rinse, dry, repeat. And then hey, next on the initiative is going to be Esso. Your turn. All right. So I have a spell casting question. Yes. It says the duration is one melee round. Like, how many attack? Like, what's the rule for how many attacks something costs? So one melee round is fifteen seconds, which is when you're out. When everyone's out of attacks and we go to a new round, that's a melee round. Okay. I just don't know if that means like that's the time it takes to cast it, or or that's just how long it lasts. Duration is how long it lasts. Okay. How long then... it takes to cast a spell is dependent on its level. Versus how many attacks you have. Well, not versus how many attacks that you have. But what is it? Levels 1 through 6 take 1 attack. Spell levels 7 through 10 take 2 attacks. We just went through this and I keep forgetting it every single time we do it. So I'd have to look at magic and the number of attacks that it takes to to do it. It's in the main we go through this every time. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Try right. casting spells. There it is. Times it takes to cast a spell. You know what? Let's highlight that and let's put it somewhere where everyone can reference it. Right there in chat. Bang! Spell invocation levels 1 through 5 counts as 1 melee attack. 6 through 10 count as 2. 11 through 15 use up 3. There you go. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, I'll call out. Uh, if anyone has a throwing weapon, hold it up because I, I can do something with it next. Uh, Little um, busy. <laughs> anyways, y yeah, uh, yeah. And then I will. Is there something within thirty feet of me? How about if we roll demon and monster lore first? That works. Let's do identification. Before you, you start listing your actions, it might change things. There's a lot of info we might have to give you. Okay. Unless you just fail the rolls multiple times, then you're just like, I don't know what the hell they are. Why is it whenever like I'm just rolling for fun, I get like ones and twos on the first die, and whenever I do an actual roll, it's a six or an eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a 67. Um, is that so, all right, well, we have to take it one at a time. The 
first one is a, is a 67. You're not sure what they're called, but you you can't remember if they were classified as a demon or a devil, but you know it's one of the two. Okay. And it flies and it does nasty, you know, you're just all like, oh, crap, I should have paid attention during that class. You know, <laughs> so you're just like, um, um, ooh, ah, uh, shit, it's one of the two. That's about as close as, you know, you, you flubbed the roll. So, you know, you didn't, you didn't 98 the damn thing. So, you know, but you can at least be like, I know it's one of the two. That's not good. We're not aliens. I can tell you that much. Right. Right, you're just all like, oh man, it, it's it's either a demon or a devil. I can't remember which one. I can't remember the name of them. So, right, and, and uh, the, second one? the second one, forty-four. Okay, which makes it. Yes, <laughs> it does. You know them as gargolites. They are categorized as kind of like subspecies of demons, but they come from the gargoyle family which align themselves with demons. A lot of people kind of consider them demons. Eh, you know, it's kind of up in the air. But gargolites are, are kind of like the little liars and shock and small little shock troopers and, and shit like that for Gargoyle Nation. And they also work with, with demons. So if you're seeing a, a couple of them, you're just all like, um, okay. They're, they're normally... You rolled well enough to where you're going to know that they're normally like spies and infiltrators and thieves and stuff like that. That the only time that they're ever included in like as a what you would think as a shock troop would be if something major just happened and these guys were set loose to just create havoc. You know they fly, that they have night vision... That you know that they can turn invisible at will, and that they can bio regenerate, and they may be they may be small, but their bodies are able to take tremendous damage before they give up. You also know that they can metamorph into stone and get stronger. Thankfully, there's no stone around here, and that they can breathe fire. They they can breathe like a like a, a a fire the equivalent of like a fire bolt you know kind of thing anything else they're supernatural they 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 like to rip and shred things they're very you know that one of the vener- the vulnerabilities of them is that they're very greedy they do have some ma- minor uh psionics they're not they're not magical in nature but they are considered supernatural on the scale of the type of creature considered supernatural creatures they are not carrying any they're not carrying any guns or knives or anything with them and you said they work with devils or demons demons gargoyles gargoyles align themselves with demons do you have magic lore by any chance i have lore magic Okay, now that you've successfully identified a creature, you can now roll your lore magic. Okay, lore magic. 17. Your character feels that coupled with the dark energies that you felt, the rifts and the... You're pretty sure that the bat-like creatures are demonic. You know that these guys are demonic. They're all hanging out together. Obviously, they're working with one another. There is a passage in books that you studied that have talked about the great minion war and you have a sinking suspicion that demons have just made a push yeah those aren't aliens those are demons and they need to die especially the chunky ones you rolled well enough that i will personally you can put this on your character sheet that when it comes to Anything minion war related, I will give you a plus ten percent to your lore magic for minion war information. You rolled well enough that it was just about a critical critical success. I, I, as the GM, will call it as such. So you you've studied the minion war information. Let's put it that way. I reward good rolls. That was a very good roll. So. And I didn't pick up anything as to, like, they have resistances to some elements, as far as I'm not, aware. Not these, not, 
not gargle lights. They're they're pretty they're pretty small. They're 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 lesser forms. Let me check here. They are impervious to toxic gases. They cannot be turned into stone by any magical means. If they are in a stone form, which is when they do their metamorphous stone, they are resistant to heat and fire. So plasma and lasers would do half damage, but only when they are in stone form. And they obviously are not that. Okay, well, with that information... um... I don't see any rocks. I'm happy. Okay. I'm going to cast an electric arc at them. At one of them. Okay. Uh, 30 foot range and plus 2 to hit. Okay. What else? Is, you have to roll to hit or does it automatic hit? Uh, it looks like roll to hit. Okay. What level of evocation is it? Looks I got fun. it. I got it. Sorry. Too many spreadsheets at the same time. Yeah, I got it. Nope. I have it. I have it open on my book right now. So, does it, oh yeah, it's saving throw is a dodge. So spend the eight points and you get a plus two to strike. So roll a d20 times two. D20 times two or plus two? Or, or plus two, yeah. Eleven. Okay, it's going to be close. No, they're natural AR. Okay, so it's a minus two to hit while they're flying. That's from an eight. That goes to a ten. You just rolled over a ten. So you will hit with the electric arc. They do not opt to dodge, so you may roll damage. The two d six mega damage. Yeah. Now you're hitting one. You're hitting one of the gargolites. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Do you want to hit number one or number two? Uh, number one. Okay. Number one is the one that Aldo hit. And I did nine mega damage. Okay. So he takes damage. And he shrieks and looks right at you. <laughs> like, oh, mage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he has that look. And you're like, well, all right. I just reiterate, if anyone has a throwing weapon. <laughs> That's one attack. We'll go back up to the top. Monty, Charlene is up next. Shoot it in the head. Well, I wouldn't go for the penalties for trying to aim for the head if I was you. <laughs> and the general major is like, I see it. It's hurt. It's small, but it's sturdy. Let's see if you can drink this. Oh, you want to shoot at Gargolite number one? Yep. Okay, so you're going off the information that you heard Esso yell out that, you know, what everything she yelled out. These are demons. They need to go. You know, that kind of stuff then, right? Yep. Okay, so it's a single shot from your big gun again. This will be your second attack. So someone roll... Tell someone to roll a d20 plus one for you. If you would please, Brandon. Fifteen. Fifteen will hit. Damage may be assigned. Go for it. How many? 2d4 times ten plus twenty. Sixty. Sixty. Cool. This round is gonna is gonna plug them right in the chest. It's gonna leave like a, a decent hole. There's gonna be some goopy bits that kind of ooze out, but he is still structurally pretty sound. He's still flying. He just kind of he just kind of looks cross-eyed like, "Oh! Oh god, that was that was stupid painful." So, felt that one. Yeah. Yeah, he felt it, but he's not dead. Let's put it that way. Okay, this guy's getting annoying. Uh, you know, two of them are like, "These guys are annoying." Oh, uh, they can they can take a pounding. Esso is is not is, is not surprised. You're just like, "Yeah, yeah, these freaking guys, they, they, they can they can take an ass whooping. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> right. If only you knew what the hell the bats were flying around. <laughs> You're like, you know, damn it. And speaking of the bats, they are next. This is going to be fun because everyone's about to be covered in bat shit. So, <laughs> no. Not good. Here they come. All right. There are dozens of these things flying around here. There will be. It's just a matter of of everyone who gets attacked here. So that is... What is their bonus? We'll just go in line here. Aldo has two of them that fly down to fly down to attack him. That one's going to hit. 
That one's going to hit. It's considered a uh, hand-to-hand -hand attack because they are they are flying. Uh, he has his big gun in his hands. He is going to try and do his best to use the gun as a base to parry and and do stuff. And you can parry up to up to four for free with that. If you get any more than that, then it you just automatically get hit because it's too many attacks for someone to to try and parry at that time. So for the thirteen, he gets a natural twenty. He's just like nope, nope, nope. Just kicks it and it flies off to the side. And he's like, uh uh no, this dwarf don't play that. And then he's got a seven. Uh, or actually, that's a 9, and he gets a total of a 17, so he'll parry those attacks as well. So he does not get hit. Misfortune, you are outside. You have two of them that come at you for for attacks, and that will be a 16 and an 8. Both of them are going to hit. If you'd like to roll a standard parry, you can. Because you have your guns out right now. Uh, what would I be pairing with? Basically your hands, your guns, just knocking them out of the way. I'll allow it. I mean, you get a bonus if you have your vibral sword out, but you don't. You have your two guns, so. And you have a plus eight to parry, so I need, yeah, I have, I need two rolls oh. from you with a plus eight for each. Do they take up any attacks? Nope, nope. Parry is automatic when you're trained with hand-to-hand, -hand, remember? Alright, so the first one is a nat 20. Oh, pfft. That's what Aldo did. You parry spectacularly, bad. You're just like, no, hands off. Don't touch. Uh, second one is a 12. That will also parry. Oh, you rolled. Even when you roll super low, you still parry. Okay, then Monty, Char uh, Charlene is being attacked by two bats. And there are. I get a 13 and a 21. Would you like to just use your standard parry? Yep, she'll take she'll take that and take a plus six base. Okay, who's if making? You would, who's um, making? Do that? If you would please, sir. Who was it? I'm sorry. I figure she can basically use her use her who's legs. Who's making the rolls? Unbarrel, what have you? Right. Who's making the rolls? If so. you would please, sir. Oh, me. All right. Cool. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you're at plus six. The first one is a total of a 19. That will parry the 13. And the second one is a natural 1. It's going to do full damage as it rakes its claws across your face. I, I see her basically. She hikes her leg up, kicks one. The other one goes, oh, an, an opening. And like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's what you get for me doing it. I, I roll ones. So. I, I can see her. She, one flies in. She puts... She, Boots it in the head, and the other's like, tackle! Okay, I'll take notes on, on your character for you. Your force field will take 12 points of damage. Better it than me. Because you did... You, all of us have got our force fields up, except for Esso, who's got its own magical field up, so... Yeah, but seeing the sparks of the claws rake across it is like, that could have been me. And then, Esso, you have two uh, bats that attack you. And they are both going to hit. Would you like to roll a parry? Ugh. Yeah. So you're straight up dice for your parry. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Yeah, you're not the combat person. You're like, okay, guys, me being in combat's a bad thing. <laughs> so the, the first roll? A two. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I only got a seven. All right. I so rolled a fuck. It almost was a one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and the second one? Land in the dice mat, please. Uh, Thirteen. Okay, you got a total of a twenty. So you God get, damn it. yeah, you get scratched by bats twice. They just fly by and scratch at you. Okay. So, oh my gosh, that's max damage. Okay. <laughs> it's a total of twenty-one mega damage. Well, armor of it then's gone. Um... Right. But at least that, that takes out 10 points, so 11 damage. Okay. Are you wearing your... Is is your light I'm, robes going to take the damage, or is this going to be damage applied to you? My ro my robes are taking it. Okay. Okay. Do you know That's how to good. use the combat recorders that I I included in the pack? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I use those whenever I'm taking damage. Okay, okay. 
or using just, PPE or it, it it's it's a good thing to capture everything number of attacks PPE active abilities you know all that stuff so it's just I yeah. was just wondering if you were if we were using that they're they're very handy I think I use them I have one for Aldo and I I use it for everything so cool. yeah no I just took the spells active off because that's gone yeah, and then yeah. put some damage on the robe yep 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 yep. Okay, so your your robe gets your robe gets a little shredded. You're just like, oh man, I like this one. What the hell? Uh, yeah. So that's it for them. Next will be misfortune is up next. Thomas, you're up. So I'll uh, I guess I'll skip him and go to someone else. Ta-da! Wow, rough crowd. Nothing, huh? Come on, guys. Is this on? Hello, hello, hello. Not it's on. The king. Smiling. Oh, all right. I hear you guys. <laughs> so like, Jesus. All right. The so, king is having court. He shall not be disturbed. Yeah. So, so since Miss, we'll do her in just a second. Then go to the little flying gargalites. We'll do the first one. Uh, he um he looks right at the mage and smiles. And uh, yeah. flies towards you, and you see a fire gout belch forth. And it, it, it does sound like he burps. He just goes, Bleh! and you just see this, uh. right, you just see this gout of flame come out towards you. He just, he just burps flame at you. I would like to try to dodge that. Well, let's see if he hits first off. I, I <laughs> I have to, I gotta roll, I mean, you never know, he might miss, so. Uh. And he misses. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I only got a total of a five, he needs an eight to hit. Any ranged weapon needs an eight. So, he he misses. His gout of fire goes off towards your left side and hits, a, hits the floor. It goes, Bleh! Okay, I'm back. Okay, let me finish the other... Gargolite, and then I'll come back to you. So that one shot at you. Which where does he go? Where does he go? Let's you know, let's just randomly roll to see who he wants to attack. Oh, okay. Well it's a good thing you're back. There is a misfortune, there's a gargolite that flies close to you. It's not the one that's damaged, it's a new one. He flies in front of you and he belches a gout of fire from his mouth at you. What the hell? Are these things related? That's another five. Wow. Okay. And he misses completely as the fire gout goes past you. And it will be your turn then. Miss Fortune. Alright, I'm gonna shoot the one I shot at last time. What was that? That was a bat, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be impossible to find the same target with the number of bats and how they're flying around. Okay, I'll, I'll fire at one of the big baddies then. Okay, you want to fire at the one that just belched fire at you? Yeah, why not? Okay, so two d20s plus one. Okay, first one's going to be my left hand. Uh, that'll be a total of a 17. Okay. And uh, right hand. The yeah, total of an eight. Okay, the the eight does not hit. You're you're gonna just miss him because he's flying, so you misjudge that. But you do punch him with one of your pistols, so you may roll damage. Uh, be twenty. Twenty damage. Okay. Again, these guys are pretty pretty tough. You're you're gonna hit him yeah. dead in the chest. It creates a burn mark, but he just kind of he's just kind of like, <laughs> all right, that was annoying. Gargolites just went. That's it. It will be Aldo is next. Aldo is is kind of a rinse, dry, and repeat guy. He's all like, I, you know, he'll answer back to So where he's all like, I don't throw stuff. Oh hey, watch out! <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't you feel better about that, So? He he told you to watch out now. Uh huh. Yeah, and he's gonna do a three round burst at Gargolite number one because. You guys have all said that he needs to go away. And he's going to get a total of a 17, which is going to hit him. I do 1d6 times 10 to him. Ooh, max damage, 60 points. 
Oh, ho, 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 ho. very nice. Uh, he's missing a leg and part of an arm, and uh, one of his wings is badly burned. He he hits the ground hard. He doesn't have much left. <laughs> he may be a tough little guy, but there's been enough damage assigned to him that he's just all like, yeah, yeah, I really felt that one. Uh, that's even enough on the supernatural damage that he needs to make a stun saving throw the impact table. The supernatural is 60. That's that's good enough damage. He's got a 20% chance. All right, so for a roll less than 20, he gets a stun effect. And he gets a 46, so he's fine. He's not stunned. He's just missing parts of his body. He's like, <coughs> oh, my God, that's terrible. Sadly, he's in the fight. It's there. Esso, your turn. All right, well, um... I want to try to move behind people so I'm a little less, you know, likely to be targeted <laughs> while okay. I recast Armor of Ithin. <laughs> okay. So get some cover and cast your spell. Yeah. Sounds, that that sounds fantastic. You're just like, bing! All right. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> All right. Who, who do you want to hide behind, basically? Or are you uh, somewhere on the, sh like, landing gear on the ship? Or, I mean, there's, yeah, make something up. What, what are you hiding behind? Uh, probably landing gear on the ship. Okay, sounds good. Jump off the ramp and go behind landing gear and be like, oh my god! Yeah, just take a second to, you know, re recover armor. Yes. It's cheap, but it's very effective. Especially as you go up in levels, armor of Ithin starts getting pretty, pretty nice. Back up to the top. Monty, Charlene is up again. Same thing as our dwarf. Ren's driver, Pete. On the same guy who's, like, really damaged, flopping around on the ground? And she's pretty sure he's going to have them under control. She's going to aim at the one that's fresh. Okay, the the one that's attacking Misfortune. Yep. All right. Off. Okay, okay. Who's making the roll for you, sir? Brandon, if you would, please, sir. D20 plus one. 13. 13 will just do it. Roll the damage. Okay. 2D4 times 10 plus 20. Yes. It's a big, nasty... 70. Unfortunately, the rounds are stupid expensive, so... Charlene is chewing up money like it's none other. <laughs> yeah, it's a tank killer. It is designed to be a, a single-man tank killer. It states that. So you do 70 damage to him. Well, he's going to take it like a champ, but that is going to cause a, a possible stun effect. 70 damage is 20% on Supernatural. He gets an 86. He makes it handily. So he doesn't suffer any effects. But he gets shoved backwards like five feet in the air when he goes like, Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, he's still in the fight. So Charlene, you, you, you tag him, but you're like, Ah, all right. I see. I see. Next time, going for the, going for the flat top. And next is going to be all of our, once again, all of our lovely bats that are flying around. There and there. Okay, that's, hmm. All right. Hey, Thomas, at this time, as a kind of a free thing, could you please roll me a perception check? It's just a straight up d20 for you. Yeah, eight. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, I Yeah, you, you, you're, you're hitting bats. All right, so two bats... Go after Aldo again, and that one's going to miss, so that one doesn't count. That's going to hit. He's going to try and parry it for a total of an 18, so he parries. He doesn't get hit. Misfortune, you have the same two bats swirling around trying to hit you. Um, one, wow, well, same dice, same guy. That one's going to miss. You're only going to get hit once unless you'd like to parry. Thomas, do you want to parry? Wait, what? <sighs> you have one demon bat that's attacking you, and it hit. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll parry. There's something weird going on with my attributes, so I'm trying to double check everything. No, you have a plus eight to parry. There's No, it's just a dodge, because, like, in my OCC uh, uh, abilities section, it says about... Uh, plus three to dodge and it's a plus eight already up there uh-huh and my physical prowess is 23 but that's only a 
a plus three, but for some reason it says plus four. Oh wait, no, never mind. So then, yeah. the thing of it is, a parry is free in hand to hand, but a dodge will take an attack. Well, well I, I know. I, yeah, he's I'm he was just general. comparing. He was just saying that his his stats they don't add up. A physical prowess it, of twenty three is a plus four, four to hit, yeah, or a plus but, four. Sorry. So I'm but, wondering if. So I don't know if that dodge. plus eight is including that plus three because I it know. It should. Well, then where did the other one go, or where did the other one come from? Was it from my athletics? One skills? of your yeah, one of the physical skills. One uh, of those just, adds. Actually, I think it's from boxing. Yes, boxing gives you another parry. And then oh, uh, you get a dodge from acrobatics or gymnastics or something like that. So that's where the plus one's from. Well, well then, okay, I'm so, still going to have to double check everything. Your parry is a plus eight. I'm fairly certain that that's accurate. Well, I know the parry. Okay, I'm just going to roll. Yes, please roll. Okay. Yeah. 13. A, th a total of a 13? Uh, yeah. He got a total of a 15 to hit, so he's actually going to scratch your shield. Because you have your... You have your shield up, right? Well, everyone did. I, I, I heard four, five, six. So ten points of damage to your shield. Okay? Uh, okay. And then Charlene, these pesky bats are bugging the crap out of you. One hit and one miss. That is three times in a row on this purple die that I have rolled a miss. A very low single digit. Not a fumble, but a very low one that makes it miss. So, do you want to nominate someone to roll a parry for you? Yes, please, Brandon. There you go. Okay, what's the plus? Plus six. Plus six. You should have picked someone else. Um, that's an eight. Yeah, an eight is going is not going to beat its twelve. Say again, Monty. I walked on you. It happened last time before. Go figure. She's not good. He's not going to put him to kick him out of the way. They take advantage and fly under a guard. You'll take five damage. So that'll be 17 damage total to your field. Okay? At least they're not doing a ton of damage. Always a good thing. And then Esso, who actually has cover. So I'm going to give you an AR bonus for having cover for the two bats that are trying to attack you. That's what the cover is going to do. It's basically going to up the the number they need to hit. So it goes from basically a, a four. So I'm going to give you like a good 50% cover. You're going to go up to a 12 that they have to roll over to hit. Okay? Oof. Hey, every little bit counts. Yeah. Especially right there. It just rolled an eight. That would have normally have hit, but it doesn't. It bounces around and hits cover and scratches and crawls at, at the landing gear that's in its way. And the other one, unfortunately, he works his way around it and scratches at you successfully. You can roll a parry. Okay, parry is a plus zero. 18. Holy crap! 18 ties. Just fended off. Awesome. This is like, I just got this armor back. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just like, stop! 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 <laughs> it scratches at you, and uh, it, and you just you just fend it off. That was, a, that was a good roll. Good job. That's it for them. He is... Oh, that's the bats. So next, we're back to Miss Fortune. Thomas, you're up. Okay. I'm going to try to shoot at something. Probably the same thing, unless Monty killed it. No, the one that you that attacked you that you were shooting at is very much very much fresh. Even though Monty tagged it with a good shot, it's still it's still there. So you can shoot at that one if you'd like. Yeah, we'll do that. go for it. Roll it. Right hand. Uh, that one. What um, is wrong with you? I got another seventeen. Okay. Roll me a percent oh, for the nat one, please. Fifty-two. 52. Okay. <laughs> For some reason, the plasma cartridge that you have in that cylinder, it instead of the hammer and striking it, the cylinder didn't feed correctly, and you actually see the round pop out of the cylinder and roll around on the floor. Okay. <laughs> You're just like, what the hell is going on with my guns? <laughs> yeah. All right, but does the other one hit? The other one did hit, yes. A 17 uh, was good. 
Uh, 40. Woo! 40. Right on. 40 enough for a stun effect. Yes, it is, just barely. So he has a 10% chance to become... to get a stun or a knockback penalty. He rolled a 12. Very close. He actually thought about being stunned there for a second, but then he shrugged it off. So he is okay. But yeah, his his skin reddens and he takes he takes the shot. You're like, wow, these things are tough, man. It, it, and you would be correct. They they definitely are. So after you is the is the two gargolites, the damaged one on the ground. He's gonna do something, maybe. What is all of this? No, 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 no. That won't help. That won't help. So he doesn't have any psionics that's going to help him. He doesn't have any magic. So what? Well, he can... Well, yeah. It's the only th He can... Well, oh, that's every hour, so is, that's not going to help. Okay. The one who's really damaged and missing, missing an arm, part of a wing and a leg, he's just kind of like rolling around uh, on, on the ground, and he's going to fill up his mouth full of fire and try and belch at a penalty, I might add. But he is going to belch a gout of fire at our mage because he doesn't like him. Or her. I, <laughs> so he just goes like, you just hear me like... <laughs> Now, you have cover. You need an 8 or above to hit normally. You gain 50%. So that's going to put you at a 14 total. He is damaged and rolling on the ground, so I'm going to give him another negative 2 to hit. So he needs to get at least... He has to get over a 16 to hit you. And... um. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Holy shit. I'm really, really sorry. That's a nat 20, ain't it? That's a nat 20. Why me? <laughs> shit. Fuck. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was bound to happen to somebody. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to roll a percent to see what his uh, crit is. That would be an 82 on the crit table. Wow, that's that's pretty hard. Wow. Okay, so he's going to roll double damage, and you lose your next attack for being stunned automatically. Damn it. You take 26 mega damage. 26, is that all? Uh. Do, do you want more? I can no. add more if you want. No. <laughs> All right, well, Armor of ethan has gone again. So another 16 off of... Ooh, your robe is just like in tatters now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, my robe's got eight hit points left. <laughs> it's, it's, nothing, it's basically like a string bikini at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Aldo's looking off to his side. Go, little demon. Hell yeah. There we go. <laughs> A little help <laughs> if I wasn't so dazed that I couldn't say it. <laughs> yeah, you get blasted, you fall down, you're like, ah! <laughs> uh, uh. Hey, Monty, there's a, for once... there's a puff of smoke, you don't know if it's from a cigarette or from the singe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Monty, someone else took the natural 20. How about that? Usually it's you. Usually it is. <laughs> My character usually right in the chest. <laughs> or the face if we're playing Battle Lords. Point this yeah. in towards yeah. enemy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who could ever forget your poor Sizerac making the demol flubbing the demolition skill roll? <laughs> that was that wasn't so bad. The whole point this in towards enemy. Oh crap! That mm. wasn't so bad. Even the brand used as a shield. Mm. Uh yeah, yeah. When you guys were running away and he picked he picked up your body and. He put him over his back and he was using you as like a, a shield while people were shooting at you and he was running away. You took a lot of damage that day. <laughs> it was just such fun. Just all kinds, kinds of fun. And then when she finally woke up, 
and tried to attack someone. She rolled a critical fumble. I think it was on one of her weapon systems, and the grenade launcher exploded. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> after the ram walked over and pulled her carcass out of the hole, like, you don't look so good. She's like, I feel fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, really. I'm fine. Meow. <laughs> Ah, oh, the things that happens while we're gaming. That's hilarious. Okay, so the other Gargalite that is flying around, he's... Oh, man. He is... Let's see. He's... Okay, so he is flying in at Miss Fortune, and he is making a grab attack at Miss Fortune. You can attempt to parry, because it is a, a hand-to-hand attack. So you can roll a base parry if, if you want. And he will hit, by the way. Huh? It, it, he will hit. So you need oh, to roll a parry. Okay. I thought you meant he's going to hit no matter what. I'm like, well, dang. No. I didn't roll a natural 20 on that. I only roll natural 20s against Monty and apparently Brandon uh, now. Uh, yeah. A total of 19. A total of a 19 will make it. You, you bat him away. Uh, he seems like that he w- he flies up right next to you, point blank, and his talons just like grab like crazy at you. You think that he was grabbing for your guns to take to take your weapons out of your hands. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, ah, give me, give me, you little bastard. Give me, bitch. And you're just like, yeah, you've made a tactical error, dickhead. <laughs> Do you know what that is, Thomas? Uh, he just, he he's at point blank range, basically. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Your 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 chance to miss is like really stupid low now. Let's see. So Gargolite is done. Aldo is next. Let's see. That guy just wiped out our mage, so Yep, three more rounds downrange from Aldo. He's he's gonna help out the mage. He's like, hey, 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 hey! Dude, I'm right here. You should be shooting at me. I'm doing all the damage. I'm the tank. Stupid demon! Blam, 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 blam. And actually, he's going to hit because he's no longer flying. He's on the ground. So I get a total of 11. That's going to hit him while he's on the ground. And, okay, 20 damage. Didn't roll that well on the damage. Sorry, mage. I'm re- I really am trying to help you out. No. 20. Oh, actually, okay. So it's going to blow off part of his head, scorch it really good, and just put a hole in his body and stuff as he just lays there, uh, bleeding all over the place, barely moving. He's got like, he's got single digits of mega damage left. He is a, he's a corpse just waiting to happen if it, if, it wasn't for the fact that they regenerate, so... Yeah, he's just laying there. He can't even act anymore. He's just like, ow, ow. Yeah, that that hurt. That one was bad. I didn't like that one. So, okay. So your turn, except you are stunned this round, so we're going to skip you. And yes, it, uh-huh. still, burns, it still burns an attack, because it's a stun effect, okay? Okay. Yep. Bing! So... Back up to the top, and this is the fourth attack for just about everyone. I don't think anyone has burned any extra attacks. So we are coming into the fourth the uh, fourth attack is what we're starting for everyone. Charlene, you are up next. Okay, we've got the we've got the one that's splattered on the ground, and there's still one more left that's relatively whole. Of those flappers? Of the gargoyleites? Yeah, the gargoyleites. Yes, that is that is accurate. The the one that is still very much alive is hanging around right next to Miss Fortune. So it is basically point blank range from you, easily. That's good. Brandon, if you would please, sir. D twenty plus one, Brandon. Are you sure you want me to roll these? I just got a five plus one, so six. That what still happened? hits. Oh. Because he's at he's at point blank range, so you need over a four. You you still got it. So the damage applies. You may roll the damage. Eighty. Woo! Wow, that is nasty damage. Okay, so eighty. Back to the chart. Here we go. So that's a forty percent for a stun effect. So if it rolls less than forty, and it gets a fifteen, so now it is in trouble. 
So it is going to be, it's going to get, oh, it's going to be knocked prone and it's going to be stunned. Prone, stun. Okay. So, Charlene, you put your barrel point blank into its chest and pull the trigger. It rips a good portion of its chest out of its body. It flies around violently and hits a support for the for the landing gear and then just falls on its back. Uh, it's still alive, but it's making gurgling noises as it's trying to breathe through the burnt score marks of its chest cavity. You put a hurtin' on it. Word of word, only for the moment. Right. It, it, it is hurt. Okay, and then demon bats. All right. We'll just call them demon bats. I either. Even though in-game that's what they're called. Uh, <laughs> that's what they really are. They're called demon bats, but we can't identify creatures to save our lives around here. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Hey, it's not my fault. I'm the only one with the skill. That's why we want a mage. Okay, Thomas, can I ask for you to roll yet another perception check for this fortune, please? Yep. D20. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Uh, 13. 13. Uh, you notice and, and hear that there is probably a bunch of bat-like demons that are doing significant damage to the outside of your ship. You hear you, you see smoke. You hear sparks. You hear screeching and metal being torn away. Okay, I'm gonna go on the comms. Does everyone have comms? Oh. Well, we're all kind of right here. I don't think really you need to yep. yell at us on comms. Well. I I would say that all of us do have comms. Yes, but yeah. You know. All right, I'm gonna scream out and say they are hurting my ship. Can we please kill them? Okay, and. Okay, that sound that sounds good. This was during their attack, so let me do their attacks now. So everyone will will hear that. So just to let you know. Uh, Aldo, two bats attacking him. Oh, and here come the natural twenties. Son of a bitch. Now it's my turn. See the first one, I get a twenty-four to parry. I get my parry that. That's a that's a fifteen. Now the second one, he got a natural twenty. This could suck. Um, well, I got a I got a twenty-two, but that doesn't help versus the natural twenty. So I will get scratched by him, and he's going to roll. So he's going to do double damage to my shield, and I'm going to take a stun. That fucking sucks. Stupid bats. Oh, good. Well, double damage, it's only eight. <laughs> Is that the first damage I've taken? Yeah, it looks like it. So, eight. There we go. And then Aldo. Uh, everyone sees Aldo get swarmed by bats, and he's waving his gun around. And he's like, get the mother, get son of a... And then he takes a wrong step off of... Uh, off of the landing ramp, and everyone sees him just fall off of it, fall about six feet onto his back, and he goes, Ugh! 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 <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, damn it. Misfortune, you've got a couple of bats attacking you still. Those are two hits. Could you roll me two parries, please? This is what it sounds like when you get outnumbered. God. So, one of them is a ten. Wow, that's a crappy roll. You'll get hit on that one. Uh, one of them is a, uh... What is that? It's a uh, 24. Uh, math is hard, isn't it, dude? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> a 24 will parry. Better. Yeah, he only got a 20. So... The one that hits you does five mega damage. So it's all against still your heavy force field, so you're probably yep. doing just fine. You're like, seriously? Seriously? Jerks? <laughs> Charlene is next with bats attacking her. <sighs> uh, 
Um, Monty, your your luck has has worn out. <laughs> How many are chewing on me? <laughs> Two of them, and one of them got a natural twenty. I'm still gonna try and parry. Yep, like the butt stroke, butt stroke. Who's making the parry rolls for you, Brandon? Would you please? All right, plus six, plus six, sir. First one, ten. Yeah, that doesn't help the natural twenty at all. <laughs> and then that one. Why? Why are you having me roll? Seriously? Oh my god! <laughs> she not. She not only dodged. She leaned into it. <laughs> god, Brandon's got it out for poor Monty today. <laughs> Damn. Right, that D twenty's going away. <laughs> That D20 goes in the fuck-off pile? Yeah, I get to go find it later. Let's see, what's the percentage? It's a 60 on the chart, which is just double damage, no stun effect. All right, so you take double damage here, and then full damage from the nat 1, because you leaned leaned into it there, Catman, for some reason. So that is, oh, that's one point away from Max. That was awesome. On the bright side, it didn't land on a one where it landed, so that's good. Okay. Thirty-five damage to your field, Monty. So that's a total of uh, fifty-two damage that your heavy force field has taken. So you're not chewed on. Yeah, you're not quite at half. It is getting chewed on, but uh, okay. And then uh, Eso, of course, you you still or Eso. I'm sorry, I'm violating my own nameology here. You have two of them that are attacking you, but you are prone. Is that right? You, or you were? You're not stunned I'm anymore. Stunned. Are you still? I haven't had another turn yet. Ah, okay. So they're going to land on you and act like rabid piranha chickens. <laughs> that's a hit, and that's a hit. Joy. Um, yeah, sorry. And there's no option to parry because you haven't had an action yet for your stun. So they just jump up and down and rip and shred and tear it, tear at you. Thirteen damage. Ow! My armor's gone. So you're no uh. longer wearing any robes, and they put scratches all over your lizard-like skin. Yep, that hurt. Ugh. And five credit mark flows down over onto you from Aldo, who's off on the side going like, oh, boobies are out. Bing! <laughs> so it's for fun. So, God, the really? day is the middle finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, really? Now? Of all times? <laughs> Son of a bitch. In my okay, that's it for them. Miss Fortune, you are up. Uh, those, those things... Uh... Let her turn up my ship. Uh huh. Okay. So you, so you want to use uh you want to use your movement to basically get up on top of your ship and start hunting down things that are chewing on your ship. Do okay. I have, a jetpack? Right, I jetpack have no idea. No, I don't have a jetpack. Okay. I d I don't have a problem with you being able to climb up to the top of your ship. I'm sure there's ladders and things and you know there. I I will say there's all kinds of stuff that you can get all over. Yeah. I. I will have to admit that I don't know what the any that's oh you have the Naruni body armor the 50 HA oh there's I'm a not wearing, I'm not wearing the 50 HA I'm wearing the uh, any BA30 which is the light combat armor because I didn't know if I was gonna be moving around and, and the and the BA50 has like a minus 30 to my acrobatic skills so oh do you have the th I only see one type of armor, and that's the BA-50. Uh, it's down in my equipment. I have a light armor, and I chose the uh Oh, NBA there it is. 30. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not 75 MDC, though. It's it's 60 MDC. Oh, all right. I think that was just light combat armor. I think that was just, like, general light combat armor, though. I don't think it was, like, Naruni or anything, but this was a spare set of armor that, that you probably bought, but... Oh, okay. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll cover it. I'm just wondering what the NEBA-50 armor does. It's a full environmental body armor that I, I bought. I'll, I'll tell you the page number in the Naruni one. Oh, it's in the Naruni book. I just had yeah, that book. book. 
I had that book open. Oh, it's page 40 of Naruni 2. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice armor. It's very nice armor. I, I think it's pretty damn expensive. That's probably where yeah. a lot of your a yeah. lot of your credits went for that. But what do you mean? I have like 800,000 plus credits right now. Oh, wow. Any any BA30 light combat armor. Did you find your old character sheet? No. Oh. No, I just bought it. Okay. I've always Okay. And uh, any BA50 is the one That's the heavy. Yeah, that's the heavy one. And you're not wearing that one? No, I'm wearing the NABA 30. Okay. I because see. Because that one I only has a 5% penalty to my... Your prowl and everything. Okay. Yeah. So the main body is C. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got stuff we need to change on your character. I have no problem with that. Yeah. That's that's cool. Oh, it, did you pay the extra credits for it to do the camouflage? Do you know? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the NABA 50, I did. What about but, the 30? It's, it's yeah, available in yeah. the 30 as well. Yeah. I'll just pay the extra one. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Jesus Again, Christ. Yeah, it's, it's it's nice armor, bro. Wow. There is a lot of stuff in this mm -hmm. armor. Yeah, just Holy wait until you look at the B Mini radar? Built in? Yeah. F it has a built in 75 point force field? Yeah. Oh, which wait. one? The NABF? No, is it? No, that's the special armor. What does. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, NEBA-30. Thermokinetic environmental body armor. Okay. All right. No, no, no. I think the 50 has all that built-in stuff, though. I'm pretty sure. Well, it says standard properties for Naruti thermokinetic armor. So what are the bonuses for thermokinetic armor? That was a good question. Yeah. Because I know I was looking at all the shit that was on there, but it ended up being the NEBA-26 special body armor. That's oh, got... That's got all kinds of freaking well, well, stuff. Well, I was to gonna it. buy some of that uh, when we when here we it went is to the supermarket anyway. So page thirty-five, standard properties of Naruni fully sealed environmental thermal kinetic body armor, masked in for red, insulated kinetic energy dampening. Oh, so when you fall, you don't take a whole lot of damage. Damn, this stuff has got a bunch of stuff. Built-in language translators. Hey, boy. Damn. Forearm. Oh, you got to remember all this shit, man. Yeah, it's been a while since I played this character, so. Standard kind of attachment forever. points on the back for servo harnesses, all, grav packs, everything. Wow. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah. I think I think for my any, uh, I think for my BA fifty, I have this any two dash forty. What's that? That's what uh, Naruni. That's the Naruni two book, page forty, because oh, that's where damn. it's located at. Is on page forty. Oh, never mind. Yes. How much is a grab pack? Oh, we could deal with that after. But yeah, yeah. It's a it's an option. It's probably like twelve million or something. You something have to. Like that. You'd have to look it up in the in the book, but it's any zero five GP grab pack. They have a grab pack and they have a jet pack. But I have one of those. I don't. I don't think so because I think the grab pack is stupid like expensive. Like twelve million. Yeah, I think it's like twelve million or something. I, I think those I thought are... I had one of them because because we were doing uh, zero gravity combat a bit of go. I remember I was flying. You should probably find your old character. Well, I think it, I think it may have been on my old hard drive or maybe my. You did not have pack. a grav pack. A grav pack is two point one million. Did I have a jetpack then? Jet. I swear. I swear I remember. The jet pack. Around. The jet pack is ninety thousand credits. I definitely have one of those. I feel like I should really, you know, when I go over to my house. That sounds that sounds familiar. Yeah, because I, I think we you had a jetpack. Yeah, I because we were doing zero gravity combat in another game session, and I swear I was flying around. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So, you can have a jetpack for one of the armors. Well, I I think I was wearing the NABA fifty, so I don't have it on right now. Okay. I so good enough. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Update your character sheet with all that stuff, dude, and send it well, to when me. When I go to my my house tonight, or when we get done, I'm I'm gonna check my old laptop to see if I left my character sheet on there. Okay. Yeah, that would I be. I don't a... think I transferred it to that hard drive that that failed. Okay. Or yeah. Because it's two years. The last time you played it was almost two years ago. So. Yeah, and I didn't have that. Uh, Actually, hard drive. just over 
It's been yeah. two years okay. and three months, apparently. <laughs> Actually, so. All right. Anyways, anyways. Uh, sorry, Monty and Brandon. We 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 <laughs> father son moment there. Trying to remember what the hell we were doing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> old old gamers never die. They just keep reliving really, really great roles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. So I'm gonna climb up to where those stupid bats are. Uh, yeah, they're I'm probably gonna take one one. Uh, oh. They're everywhere. Like I said, flying in here was dozens of these yeah, things. I'm, so yeah, I'm trying to get to the ones that are attacking my ship, though. They're all doing it. So you just need to go through and just waste, spend okay. attacks and wasting little shits. Well, then I'll do that now if I can. Yes, yeah. So you get up to the top, and you can start. You can start popping them. If you want to target separate targets, it's a minus two to hit. Uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. But I'll okay. do aim shot and spend uh, two attacks. E you're going to run out of attacks quick doing that. Okay, I'll just do the... I'm just so saying, so dude. I'm at a minus one total when I'm... Yeah, it will be a d20 minus one, but okay. you only need over a four because you're going to walk up on them and shoot them while they're chewing on shit. Okay, yeah, so we'll do uh, two separate. That's fine. Shot. Yep. So it's a D20 minus one. Okay, five. That still hits. 17. Okay, so you shoot two of them. So roll, roll me a, a, a pair of damage. One of them is 20. Okay. One of them is 10. I don't think you killed either one. Yeah, probably not. Usually... They have low MDC, but they, I don't. I, I think they're actually tougher than that. I gotta go back to the demon bats. Hold on. I need to see. go shopping. Yeah, you're gonna shoot. You're gonna shoot two of them, and they're gonna fly off all pissed off as you just as you tag them. They're just like ah, <laughs> and they fly off and circle around like son of a bitch. So, but you stop them from chewing on your ship. They're just flying around all pissed off now. Good enough. Okay, that's misfortune. Nothing. Uh, gar. Uh, yep, that guy is is gone. Aldo kind of rolls around on the ground, getting rid of a stun this round. Freaking idiot. <laughs> He'll be like, ah, rah, 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 yeah. pudding pops. I want, I want some elven pudding pops. <laughs> and Esso, your turn. All right. She's mad. Going to get up and she's going to slash at one of them with her sword. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> she's, she's like, I have had... Enough of this! <laughs> Although that plasma cartridge rifle would do a lot more damage in the longsword, but your to hit is better with the longsword. So, I'm just saying. Right now, um, I'm just going to work with the longsword, just because, you know, she's mad and that's what's in her hand. Yeah, that, that's cool. I get it. That's I get it. 19 Play on the character. die. How much? 19 on the die. Or, not, so, or not, not on the die, but like 19 to hit. Okay, so 19 to hit. Not a problem. They don't parry. They're stupid. They fly. Which one are you hitting? Oh, you're hitting a bat. I'm hitting one of the bats. I'll let oh, you pick okay. which one. Uh, yeah, I, I've got so many bats that trying to take. It's really hard for me to take. Well, I'll do this bat and this bat may be around for a while because they're on you. So we'll, yeah. keep, those, we'll keep those bats. Those That's on... So, all right. I just, I just hope they don't have a whole lot of health. Um, What's the damage? You see how the damage plays out, though, right? Yeah. Okay, so the 3d6 is the damage of your weapon. The plus 1d6 is the bonus you get for your supernatural strength as a full strength punch. You add that to the damage of, you know, when you hit something with a weapon. It's basically a, a damage bonus the same as... Uh, for your strength. And then the plus two is because it's an enchanted weapon and it gives you plus two damage. So in all, it's like 46 plus two. Pretty good Well, that's damage. 20 damage. Nice. She's mad. <laughs> okay. You, you slash it and put a deep gouge in it and it flutters around, but it is still there. Damn it. It is a demon bat, so it shouldn't surprise you too much. You're just like, whop! Well, of course. So <laughs> you're like, ah, damn it. Yeah, and then I'll finish off my round trying to get into the ship to get some different cover. Oh, time to time to run. 
Yeah. I'm basically buck naked at this point, except for the thing that holds my guns. Uh, I know. It's it's awesome. Uh, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping the five credit chit. <laughs> I will happily mark it off my dwarven character. Thank you. Five credits well spent for the show. She ran right over me and up the stairs. Bouncy, bouncy lizard titties and all. <laughs> well worth the show. I just need Charlene to come running by with furry boobs. That's ten credits. You know, running by is one thing. Running by attacking stuff while doing so, another thing. Yeah, well, yeah. it's still a show. <laughs> he don't care. He's like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He trips and falls on him and is like, okay, you're a partial shield. Oh, yeah, he'll trip and fall, all right, yeah. Oh, there, all right. How many attacks do they have? That's what I need. <laughs> where are they? I'm right on them, but where do they talk about how many attacks they have? No, no, no. Number of attacks. Hello? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So, all right. Uh, if you're gonna have a hard cup, yeah, I would. Yeah, probably one of those. One of those books might might have it, dude. I know I went through a. Uh, <laughs> through a Did you run in here to go look for your character? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All right. Okay. That's fine. If you have a hard copy, I've probably saved it. It's got to be either in there or it's another folder off on the side here. But I think I, I tried to keep the characters on there. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was Miss Fortune. Aldo just got it. So Esso just, just went. So you slash at it, and then you said you were running up into the ship, butt naked, going, ah, help me. Pretty much. Okay. Get this thing off of me. Smack it and run. All right, so now, so now we're coming up onto the fifth attack. Charlene still has attacks. Charlene, what would you like to do? She knows that the one, the last one she hit, she's stunned because she, you know, saw him blast across Lane Belenica. She walks over, puts his foot, in, puts her foot in his neck, takes the barrel in his mouth, and turns his head into salsa. Okay. Um, nominate someone to roll a d20 and pray they don't roll a one. All right, then. Brandon, would you please? I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to see if, see if my fate is rewarded finally. All right. Uh, blue or red? Red, of course. All right. <laughs> That's a four, and then whatever your plus the hit is. It doesn't matter. It was a neat. It was just don't roll a one for the gun to misfire is all it was. I can um, I keep hovering around that now. Yeah. Max damage, please. Okay, so that's 80, 100. 100. Yeah, 100 flat. Its head evaporates. Chunky salsa. And and you notice, Charlene, that when, when it dies, you're used to creatures, you know, leaving gooey bits all over the place and stuff like that. When you evaporate its head, its body basically disappears in glowing motes of embers and stuff that just kind of float around and it just disintegrates. Nothing left. Bindless foes in my time. You take the cake. So, there we go. Excellent. These guys... Okay, so these guys still have attacks. Or an attack, so I have to roll the damage. So, Charlene, you are being uh, assaulted by two bats still. And one hit, one miss... Do you want to designate someone to roll a parry for you? Yes, if you would, please, sir. Was that for Let's me? See if I get lucky this time. You want me to do it? Please. Okay, plus six. Natural 20. Not only do you parry, it looks really good. Okay. You parry him so well that if you want to shoot this exact same bat next attack, you get a plus one to strike. Because he's right there in front of you. You parried him and pushed him into a, a good position, basically. When her chance comes, she will. Okay. Aldo is going to have two bats land on top of him and play death chicken scratching. And that will be a 10 and a 16. So he gets scratched up twice. And he takes eight points of damage. Did you find it back there that you were looking? No. 
Okay. There might be other places. I'll I'll look. I'll help you look later on. All right. So I apply damage to him as he's just laying there. He can't parry or anything because he's still underneath the stun. And he's dreaming about green lizard boobies bouncing over him. Ah, what a way to go. <laughs> okay. <Shit. laughs> Misfortune. The two bats that you sh that you shot off your ship are swarming at you now. All right. Do you want to roll a parry? Yeah. Okay, I need two parries from you, please. Uh, 16 and uh, oh. 21. Okay, the 16 does not beat the total of a 19, but your 21 beats the 17. I rolled pretty good for those two. So you get you get bat scratched by one of them. And oh my take, god. What's the matter now? Nine points of damage. Nine? Nine. Your field is still very much intact. I don't think it's taken much damage, has it? Uh, no, not not much. It's only taken 24 damage. Oh, nice. And... Misfortune. So that was Charlene. So Esso, unfortunately, two bats fly into the ship and they're going nuts on you. Bam. Sorry. But I am giving you cover because you did say that you were hiding behind stuff and trying to get away from them during your movement. So not a problem. That one gets a 10. It will not make it. That one also gets a 10, and it will not make it. So both of them are chasing you, screeching and clawing and biting and just hitting random stuff inside the ship now instead of hitting you all that much. Okay, now I just got to wait for the top of the round. <sighs> so that's that. And Misfortune, you are up. I think you still have attacks, right? Yeah, I have one more. Yeah, this is your last attack here, so... Do you want to shoot at bats, chew, yeah, you know, two yeah. more chewing on stuff on your ship? Is that what you're going after? Yeah. Okay. I have a minus one penalty, right? You have a what? I'm sorry? A minus one penalty, right? Yeah, yes, because you're shooting at separate targets, right? So eight, yeah, and uh, oh, not 20. Oh, very nice. I'm not going to kill him. So the eight will will hit. Do uh, Roll damage for that one. That'd be 40. Uh, he explodes. Good. Kerpow! He blows up. Now, the other bat, roll me a percent, please. That'd be 10. 10. So you need to roll damage, but he loses an attack for being stunned. He gets a stun on him. That'd be 20. He does. All right, yeah, he st he's still survives. So, But he falls to the ground, like, flopping around in little circles, going like, Oh, oh, God! The Gargolites are out of attacks. They can't attack this turret. Which we only have one who's got, like, very low... Aldo is back up and running. How many attacks do I have? This would be my last attack. So, okay, so Al Aldo will be like, Hey, Miss Misfortune, how many? How much crap have you got up there on top of the ship? Uh, a lot. Son of a bitch. All right, I'm coming up there. Charlene, go inside the ship and keep the bats that are inside the ship from tearing everything up, please. And then, bats inside the ship? Yeah, don't ask. Uh, He's running inside the ship for our last attack. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Not to you yet. So Aldo will jump up on top of the ship, and he's just all like, Oh, son of a bitch, look at all these guys. <laughs> Damn it. If I had grenades, I would use it. Well, no, that would probably be a bad idea to the ship, wouldn't it? <laughs> ship be gone. <laughs> oh, harm is hull polishing. That's all it is. Flash burns. Right. That's a grenade launcher. I'm not so sure I want to start launching grenades on top of the ship. I'm I'm not one of I'm not Harley, so I just don't shoot grenades at my buddies. <clears throat> I like how he didn't say anything. That's cool. Oh yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Trust me. I just don't know that I have allies in there because they don't say hold up a sign saying no. I'm not in here. I need something that's a little bit more reliable. It's got some more damage to it to take out bats. So he's going to get up on top of the 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 thing. Oh, no, that's inside the vehicle. I have no choice but to use this. Okay, well, all right. So I was going to switch over to a laser rifle, but that's inside the inside the vehicle. So three round burst to a bat. That's just that's just the way it's the way it's going to be. <laughs> 
And he's going to hit. And he does 50 damage to a bat and just squashes it. He just goes like, bow, 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 and just wipes a bat off the off the face of the ship. Bat duty! No, 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 no. We are really going to have to have the ship power washed after this. <laughs> okay, and then Esso. Actually, you're out of attacks. I'm just hiding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are out of attacks. Does anyone have more than five attacks? I think we're done for this round. He's got six. Ah, Charlene, you do have an additional attack. What would you like to do? You are free and clear. When she knew they were flying into the ship, she has to get in there and, and do them roach control. Yeah. So if you run inside the ship, you see a naked but good-looking lizard mage running around. <laughs> you know, well, she's not that good-looking. She has a PB of 11, so she's average. What is Charlene? Charlene is a 15. Oh, so you're actually pretty good-looking. But there's a, a naked lizard cursing and waving a sword around at two bats that are inside the, the ship. What she's going to try to do is run up to um, get between them, you know, just move movement to get between them to where she can turn around, and when she shoots, she's facing toward the open, the open end of the ship. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I don't want to hit the cockpit. You don't want to hit anything on the inside of the ship with that much damage. Trust me. That would, that would no, be that's bad. Why I'm like, I need to get, you know, bully past these two, whatever it takes in movement and action. That's all that I have left. And flip around where I can now shoot them next turn facing the right way. Well, you can shoot this turn if you'd like to. I, I got no problem against that. Let's see if I can take one out with as minimal damage to the in internals as possible. Okay, who's making the roll to strike for you? Uh, if you would please, Brandon. <laughs> you have a lot of faith in me. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> well, it's one of those cases of, hey, you, you, you gotta roll good sometime. Uh, was it plus one? Yep. Yep. Eight. Eight's gonna be enough because this is point blank range. You just need above a four. So eight, eight will hit. All right. And Monty, oh. you have used five rounds out of eight on your shoulder cannon. All right. Well, I just rolled minimum damage to forty. That's I, I know. Forty damage still kills it. Okay. Cool. Minimum damage on that is still enough to blast them. Yeah. So. Bat number one that was inside is done. Cool. And that'll be it for that very first round. We'll go up to round two. But, guys, it's Father's Day. I need to cook. I've got some really yummy steaks that I need to cook on the grill. So this is, unfortunately, it's, it's a good place to end it right at the start of round two. I, you know, that's... Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm going to end it here. Hey, it's a, dude, come on. Steaks. Come on. You, you got to go with steaks. Yeah. And like I said, it's Father's Day. They want me to, they want me to, to cook some steaks and, and stuff like that. So At the very least, it, it could have been, you know, bratwurst with cheddar, which are so fine on the grill. Yeah. Well, you gotta, I, just, I just wanted some really good ribeye steaks. So that's what, that's what we got yesterday. So everyone – whoop, there went Thomas. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> – but Monty, thank you very much for joining us again. I'm glad you're feeling better. I know you've been really sick and and that's why you haven't been you haven't been gaming, but I appreciate you you showing up today, dude. I hope you hope you feel better. Like I said, I'm still fighting along. The doc says with the way the rings are going and so forth, if it all works out, I'll, I may be going home in two to three days. I'm that's pushing cool. for it. That's cool. And Brandon, I hope you had a good time. Hope you like your character. I, I think your character is very good. So I appreciate you yeah. showing up. Just next level up, I need to focus in things that give me uh, dodge and parry. <laughs> you're you're yeah. playing a mage, oh, I, I, dude. I need to you're be able to, you know, not get touched for some of it. Well, that's that that's a mage. I mean, they're not they're not made for that. For everyone that's listening in. Psycho Squad really appreciates your your time listening to us uh, play some more some more riffs. I promise this game is not going to go away. We'll put it in our queue of uh, of a game that we'll play more regularly. So 
that's it. That's all we got. I appreciate everyone listening. Thanks to all my gamers out there. Thanks to everyone listening. Thanks to my gamers playing. Happy Father's Day to everyone. And we're signing out. Thank you very much.